dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old guys and sing a song we'll roll the old guys and sing a song we'll roll the old guys and sing a song cause it's the end in time last time when we wrapped up on Missed Opportunities, Ghosts of Salt Marsh, a little recap for all of you. The party is presently in a realm called Dementlieu, a land where illusion frequently masks reality. The appearance of wealth is all that matters, and many are glad to let memories of the unflattering past simply die forgotten. Ruling over this land is the cruel Duchess Cedra Donaire, always masked, erudite, and aloof. She holds lavish balls for the wealthiest in Dementlia, and those who she deems upstarts or pretenders meet a cruel fate, often reduced to dust at a simple point of her finger. The party has rescued a political prisoner, a man named Dominic, who claims to be the true heir to this realm. And he has told them that the secret to Cedra's past lies in a long forgotten house in the countryside. So the party has gone out to this place and has communed with a few spirits. They have learned of three powerful spirits that exist here. One is a woman in knightly armor. There is a burly man with an axe and then a woman in an apron. Um, I believe they have learned the names of the woman in knightly armor is Mara. The burly man with the axe is Dalk Dranzorg. And they have not yet communed with the one in the apron. Um, but their adventures around the house have yielded some clues to the past. And as they have uncovered different um, secrets, as they have awoken smaller spirits and encountered other hauntings, it seems like their simple presence in the house is awakening it. Like the memories are coming to life within both benevolent and sinister at the same time. So, my friends, you, I believe, have just completed a short rest in one of the sitting rooms of this place. And you have, uh, as we left off last time, the planchette, the little scrying piece with the um, uh, see-through bit that helps you on a Ouija board or a spirit board, um, was knocking against the door as Prion opened it and then it shot up to a table. It seems the spirits are eager to communicate with you all again when you have the chance. But first of all, you are short rested. I believe probably Talise, you are probably full rested since it's been a bit since you've been with us. So since I, since I disappeared in the hallway. Yeah. Melvin Hi. just done identify, I believe. On on the axe probably he revealed what i uh, told you before actually oh, okay. mm -hmm. there's also but um you do feel the urge prion to hit something with it it just <laughs> it, it feels restless in your hand uh for what it's worth also from my notes i have that we heard the stone archway coming down that's correct <laughs> Let's go exploring. Da, da, da. 
And I do believe okay. that we'll have a small wizard boy here shortly. Yeah, what oh, is this stream if books? I can't bully Melvin? <laughs> All of this investigation is stuff is it's, it's playing two. second fiddle to the true conflict of this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> the eternal conflict. Yeah. Like, oh, I like your, your exactly the right time. I like oh my your, God, sweater. your sweater. Thank you. It's so cute. Yeah, it's a great sweater. It looks like a Christmas I'm jumper. I'm glad you're here for me to bully you. <laughs> it, it is. It's oh. the Overwatch Christmas jumper, in fact. Oh, very nice. Oh my God, yes. he said jumper. <laughs> Are you now partially owned by Microsoft? Just kidding. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm so happy and not happy about that. I'll I'll pine on disc about. We're that allowed thing. to have complicated feelings here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yes, you all are resting in the um, in the drawing room, drawing having just completed a short room. rest, hearing the. Mm. Archway collapse in the gallery. Mm. And also being aware that um, the spirits are restless. Uh, just so David knows, Melvin has a D6 inspiration. Ooh. Okay, great. Thank you. From our wonderful supporters who hype trained, they verbed it. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> um... Oh, we had our first Klaus in our first like five minutes. Sounds about right. <laughs> right? Just normal Friday. Normal Klaus Friday. Klaus is not a patient yeah. being. <laughs> so, potentially creepy archway or potentially creepy seance? What are we feeling? Hmm. I mean, both we, sound so appealing. We could learn more about the spirits here. Seance it is. I run after the planchet. <laughs> okay. We. <laughs> it is just sitting on the table there, by the spirit board, and Amazing. just kind of sitting there and jittering in place. Okay. I put my finger down on it. Chill the fuck out, jeez. Okay. Do the rest of you follow, just out of curiosity? I, I, I would, but I can't see myself on the board anymore. Um, you can put can yourself on the board, Priyan. That Serene talked to the spirits before. Serene will definitely be talking to the spirits again. Mm -hmm. I will join me. I say. She comes over and puts oh. a webbed finger, <laughs> a webbed fingy, <laughs> on the plate. <laughs> Oh, well, you know that because of you, I literally say that on a day-to-day -day basis now. Like it's fingy? fingers, it's fingies. Oh, I was like a yeah. webby fingy. No, fingy. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. So um, congratulations, I you've influenced my vernacular. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Talise is definitely going to come and stand up next to the table, but she's not touching that. She doesn't she's like the whole big seance thing going on. No, they're for support, but this is definitely strange. <laughs> Even for her. It is strange. And as you all place your hands on the, um, uh, on the planchette, you hear again or feel again this conflicting um, information kind of reaching out to you. You feel your your hands and minds being drawn to a number of different beings in the room. Um, both the woman in armor and then the burly man with the axe have grown in intensity as if your attention to them has increased their presence and their um, control and awareness within the house. Um, the woman in the apron that you've kind of come to know more passively feels a bit more faint at the moment, but um, is still there. It is up to you who you reach out to. I vote Apron Lady. Yeah, I was, I was thinking Apron Lady sounds, sounds good. And focus on her presence in the room. Okay. Rain closes her eyes and settles in. 
Serene, have you ever worn an apron? Um, no, but the help did. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Just an average everyday girl under the sea. <laughs> what? You have three questions to ask. Mm. What questions do you all ask this spirit? Do you do you know what you did you have something in mind? Is that your question? Just kidding. No. Okay. <laughs> do we, you we should uh, from from this sort of like a meta perspective, we need to be asking about Cedra and da, da, Dom, Dominic. 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 Dumb, dumb, dumb. Uh, it's actually Donner Donner, which is you know Donner Donner, um, amazing. Um, you don't like it, Peter? Okay. <laughs> we will um, not be renaming <laughs> Donner Donner. What happened to Cedra and Dominic when they were children here? You hear the words soft, as if someone's speaking across a room where there is so much murmuring and um, ambient conversation. It's hard to discern the words. Um, you hear, tried to protect them, failed. Um, just, just so we're, we're clear. Uh, Saran kind of like sticks her head out because I imagine she's leaning over the plant. She's like very, <laughs> her body language, she's all into this conversation. So she kind of removes herself. Um, so, so, so they, you think that they mean that they were trying to protect the Donairs? Like maybe they were the help for the Donairs? This isn't my question. At the very least, I, I I feel like that makes sense for the apron lady. I'm not sure about Axeman and Armor Lady. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a relationship between Sedra and Dominic and... Um, or no, what is the nature of the relationship between Cedra and Dominic and Silva and Dranzorg? Uh, is that what you ask? If everyone consents to that being question number two, then yes. <laughs> I am letting you take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's, yeah. Um... Hmm. Could you state that again exactly as you asked it? What is the nature of the relationship between Cedra and Dominic and Silva and Drenzorg? Um, you hear the answer again that says um Um, raised them as siblings to bring peace equal and then there's a pause and as the spirit begins to um, speak the next word of the answer to address the second part of the question. It feels as if you are suddenly assaulted by silence. And you feel nothing, no presence. And then the planchette rumbles just a little bit again, and you feel the presence return of the woman in the apron. 
as if she was unable to answer the mm. question. Either, either um, unwilling or unable or prevented from doing so. Interesting. Where'd she go? Nope, nope, didn't. Okay, we've reestablished a connection. All right, any ideas about the third question here? Uh, third question. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Oh, sweet. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> How about what about asking about, like, Cedra's weakness? Oh, yeah. Does Cedra have any weaknesses? There's the question. <laughs> But, but what, what if what what if she doesn't know know the answer to that question? I mean, she's dead after all. But what if she has like prescience and just you know unilateral knowledge in the afterlife? <laughs> <laughs> she's I'm all not... knowing. <laughs> Some big I'm, I'm words sure there. That's... <laughs> Some five dollar words in there. Uh, Serayan is very happens. erudite, so. <laughs> Have you been looking in Melvin's journals again? Excuse me, uh, Serrate has always been very, very well learned. Thank you. <laughs> um, he stole words from my journals. <laughs> how and, and how I about how give can... all the information in mine? <laughs> how how about how do we how can we discover a way to Chilling. defeat Cedra? <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's Great. why we want to know about the, the weakness. How can we discover a way to defeat Cedra Denaire? Um... You hear the a response. This one almost comes through as a woman's voice, almost like a memory of a... Um, it doesn't even sound like it's addressed to you, but as if this were a snippet of a conversation that happened in this room or another one, maybe long ago, that says, All he needs to do is remind her. She's not a true Denaire. She is not of this family. She is a cousin. Dominic was born before, and we will bring unity to the fractured family through this. But I fear that these past deeds will not be forgotten so easily. And then it cuts off. Okay. Drama. But we just have to reveal that she's not a, a true born down here. Um, I want to make sure I heard that last bit correctly. So you said that she's a cousin, he's firstborn. And but there's a concern about his past deeds. Is that what that I that much is a little bit unclear. Was there the phrase There's concern his about past un, deeds. about past deeds? Yes. Okay. Um, his whether it's his, you're not sure, but um, it sounds like just that these these were families in turmoil, and this was some sort of compromise that happened. Okay. And then, as you ask the third question, as it happened before. The spirit answered three questions, and then there's a feeling of a gentle hand that is placed atop of yours, and the planchet zips around the board, spelling out um, the words 
um, upstairs Ezra. Maybe that's the weird elbow lady. <laughs> I what? hadn't seen elbows like that before. Oh, elbow the chimney Ezra. witch. And elbow lady. <laughs> You feel the spirit withdraw now that it has completed its statements, but weirdly enough, you all feel both the axe and the silver armor looming over you almost expectantly. There is a power and a restlessness to the other two where there was simply where it was more calm and sort of quiet resignation to the one that you spoke with just now. Do they want to chat again? Serene slams her head down on the flinch. I'm back! I guess we'll try armor lady. She scares me a little less. Oh yeah, no, I, I vibe with her. Yeah. But obviously. Uh, so, Silvera, hello. So, you, so as, as Mariah has expent her three questions and communed with the spirit, um, you feel that spirit kind of go back. And oh, then, okay. but Mara, Silvera, another person will have to ask questions if they wish to commune. Hey, now's your time, armor, armor girl. Silvera, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Come it out, looks around the room are. expecting me. Yeah. If you get possessed. And I'll you have hear, really, really cool you hear just behind your head the clinking of metal armor. Oh, he's here. Hello. How are you? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your first question? Can you be polite? Um, you, uh, you hear the words kind of whisper, sharp and commanding, impatient, you have not completed your assignment. One moment, please. What was our assignment? Kill the chimney witch. Is Ezra the chimney witch? I don't Silver? So. Silver? Who's Ezra, Ezra is just That's a one myth. question. <laughs> Ezra's a myth, but the lady in the, the apron said that. Oh, I guess it was the plan trade. It wasn't really the lady in the apron. A myth? What, what's the myth? <laughs> That's your third question? All right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you are so innocent. I love you. Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> She's just, local, she's vibing. Local superstition. Rid my home of this monster. And then the planchet zips out of your hand and <laughs> knocks against the chimney and then falls clattering to the ground there. We have to kill the witch in the chimney. Do we, do we have, have any to... other questions for her? Uh, do, do, wait, do we do we have to kill the not. chimney witch or yeah we, we were literally told to kill the... the chimney no no kill 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 was the instruction well let's go upstairs and do it then shall we there's multiple things I think the anyway. I think the actual word was evict but oh That's what I thought maybe it was, it was. maybe mince I should words. turn back and instead okay, mince well, the not chimney min witch yeah mince <laughs> mincing uh yes you're right evict the chimney witch do you think if we deliver her a letter she'll um respond <laughs> Well, we would have to wait, you know, the 30 day. You, you issue the letter and then you wait 30 days. She might have squatters rights. On the state or, you know, the realm. So we're just going to have to take her to housing court. So 30 days. Okay, but if she hasn't paid in rent days. in a certain number of days, then we probably have the rights to evict her without notice. <laughs> But she might not be her whose jurisdiction this falls under, to... and it would really depend on the jurisdiction. So I'm yeah, not we're really sure to... what our rates right are here. Now. I hear the sirens. They're coming. <laughs> the house collapses, <laughs> and we start a new campaign. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh god, it's gonna be revenge. We all wake up from a terrible, terrible dream. 
shall we go upstairs? <laughs> Aye, let's get it yes. done. We might as well, I guess, if we have to. We head up the stairs in the main hall. I go on through. I know, I was like, take the, the stairs two by two. Away. All right. Heading on up to the second floor. We'll bring you all to part two of the map. <laughs> Enjoying these like announcer vibes. <laughs> Getting right map now two, from Peter. Map two, electric boogaloo. Map two of the map. Map two, electric boogaloo. Come That's on down. <laughs> You won a brand new elbow witch. Yay. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna get my paper. So you see the um, the second floor hall. There is a small seating area with some dead plants and a obscure um, sculpture made of shells set on this little uh, end table here behind two armchairs and uh, a few doors. Most of them in disrepair, similar to what you have seen before. Which one shall I open first? Pick a door, any door, my friend. Very Why well. not the very first one? We'll be original. Do the I will first. Open the first door on the Let's left. Run all the way down to the other end of the hallway. Okay, I know it's not exactly the same, but there's something about the layout of the second floor of this map that's giving me vibes of that one house that we burned down in Velaki. Um, it's like in another life we were in a house. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've only burned down one house, and that was only, you know, partly. Hmm. Keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> As you open this door, you look and see a large sort of oscillating form over the bed. Um, what seems to be a translucent form of a tall, tall man, nearly seven feet tall, flipping over a sheet and laying it neatly across the top of the bed and spreading it thin, or, and spreading it smoothly across, his long, lanky arms reaching almost completely from corner to corner, smoothing it. He then turns, showing a blank face devoid of all features before fading into nothing. That is quite the wingspan. And you see a perfectly made bed with pristine sheets, pillows, um, mattress, and features. The headboard polished and, um, and shining. And everything else in this room is decrepit and ancient, like the rest of the house. The lack of face features, um, that's not like, it, just out of curiosity, was that any similar to the way that like, that uh, kid's face had no face when I was like looking through that guy's memories in the creepy house? Yeah, kind of. I have a small shiver that goes up my spine. I'm like, oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Who wants it makes to you sad so perfectly made in a way. Oh, me! <laughs> okay, I guess I'm sad now. <laughs> the uh In a way. The, the thought of that. In a way. Um mm. Yeah. Okay. Totally Not sad, but in a way sad. Yeah. Uh so just, Rain... just be careful going in there. There is a fireplace. Uh-huh. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so Rain goes and um actually kind of like falls backward onto the bed. Like Oh Wee! sweet fuck. Uh, okay, as I'm, Talise definitely followed her in just a few steps. If that sheet strangles you, I ain't cutting you out. I'm just Stop. like, oh, walk. it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Saran, it is dress. soft and pillowy and beautiful, and it just why is it so cozy? Uh, it just makes you want to just close your eyes and just kind of relax for a second. Serrate and starts to curl up in her armor <laughs> and is putting her little her little head on her little hands. Oh, little webbed okay. pillow. 
and um, begins Rain. to close her eyes. <laughs> this is not as, sleeping time. As Sarayan, as you say that, Sarayan's kind of closing her eyes, and you see two hands reaching over the um, sheets that just kind of tuck her in. I tuck her in? <laughs> okay. A little bit. <laughs> Snug as a bug in a rug. Just no bond out of there, girl. Um, um, Shit, come on. Saran, wake up time. We gotta go. <laughs> Splash her with water or something. Okay, oh. I'll take, I'll just like rub my hand on my arm and just. <laughs> oh, <get> some... <laughs> Y'all forgot. Oh, it's oh. like being under the waves. <laughs> oh, shit, she likes that. Okay, oh, okay. I'm just gonna like take my cold, clammy, wet hand and just rub it on her face. Mother? Um, <laughs> mother. You can't ignore me. So and as you as you walk her. up and do this, um, you see that uh, suddenly the the sheet flips over her face, and as you go to touch to wake her up, the your hand touches the sheet below. It appears there's just a cluster of sheets where Sarayan's body once was, and there is oh. now nothing there. Later, um, or maybe never again. Well. So, what the fuck? Um, 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 um. You guys want to actually come in here now? Yeah, I pull Melvin in, and we're gonna start looking it's around okay. the room. Things are happening. Melvin, I'm insisting you on investigation check. <laughs> Would you like? Oh, guidance? okay. <laughs> I, I guess I'll take a look around. Uh, I'm gonna try to do so without going too close to the fireplace, preferably. Okay. <laughs> um, so investigation, and you said uh, guidance as well. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Serene, please roll a d6 while you're at it. While you're not at it. <laughs> I will roll a d6 with my cracking dice. Uh, that'll be a, a 26 total. Um, wonderful investigation check. Um. You see um, no evidence of Sarayan. You find this room looks to be broken apart. <clears throat> um, there's nothing particularly it's... interesting about the desk. It's just a functional desk. The drawers are completely empty. No, nothing hidden. All of the dressers and wardrobe empty. This looks like it was actually a guest room. But with that check, you notice... Um, a soot, a trail of soot leading from this chimney out the door and northward in the chamber. Um, it looks like bare feet and, a, and hands along with it. Um, something walking on all fours, maybe? But it doesn't seem to match up. It's not foot, 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 foot. It seems to be foot hand hand foot 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 hand hand foot hand 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 foot foot hand it's just the strangest pattern of limbs moving along a line that you've ever seen nope <laughs> nope um it, do, do nope. i get the impression that it's like more than two hands but only two feet and that's why there's an odd number of hand foot patches. With that patches. investigation check, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I was worried about. I don't like that. Uh, um, I yeah. rolled a six. Okay. Uh, well, guys, I, I I don't find I didn't find Serene anywhere. But um, did you guys notice the trail of sooty footprints and handprints going out the door and down the hall? What? I think our friend the chimney witch is uh, on the move and has more than two two arms. Great, I love this for us. So she has more I than don't... two arms and more than two elbows. Great, great. In one whole Saran. <laughs> well, we don't if know if the has chimney witch has Saran or if that's someone else. Or she the lives in the bed mist. now. Um, I'd I'd like to to cast detect magic. Um, 
using my let me make sure i actually have this still uh my once per long rest yes of ritual spells at um their standard casting time okay so it just takes me an action to cast it um and all right take a look around the room with that up uh this it does not reveal anything new in this room no evidence of Saraian's magic items at the moment. Well, she, as you're looking around and as you guys discuss her sudden absence, um, Saraian. Mmm, so warm. <laughs> Toasty. Not quite. Ah, beans. <laughs> Um, you, um, suddenly find yourself, you see yourself in a castle. Uh, very old though, um, large flagstones constructing it, um, uh, in a large vaulted banquet hall signs of battle are around and you see a large huge man with an axe and running towards him is a woman in silver armor wielding a gleaming sword who swipes back and forth dodging around him um, parrying a couple of the blows and finally he brings his great axe down onto her shoulder and it simply ting, dings. And then she looks up and you see this bright amber glow in her eyes. And she lets out a scream of such intensity it almost deafens you before she shoves her sword up into his abdomen and he falls um, dead down onto the ground. You then see the figures around the banquet hall moving towards her as if in relief, but the amber glow does not die. You see her move to one as if she's going to comfort before taking her sword and almost bisecting this person standing there as all these figures in the banquet hall begin to try to flee the doors slam shut as she moves to each one of them in turn running them through with her sword and then suddenly you hear a voice did you have sisters Sarayan? and a balding man with just a ring of stringy black hair crowning his head I... <laughs> sits crooked over a desk in a cold room, wears a black cloak with the collar popped, and he leans over a book. The room is beautifully furnished, and he sits Indeed. in a high-backed chair in front of a desk. Uh, um, I... Um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, who, who are you? How do Answer you the know question. Well, I was very polite, young, but <clears throat> yes, I had many sisters. How are they compared to you? Uh, prettier, more popular, uh, people like them, more likable. Uh, yeah, they pretty much, uh, they are very, they aren't as smart as I am, um, I was about to not mark you as vain, but we will mark you as vain. Right, how do you compare yourself to your traveling companions? Oh. Oh. Well, um. Why are you asking me these questions? Answer. I don't compare myself. Um. Everyone has their own. Their own things that they're very, very, very very good at. Um, I will admit that when I first got here, I did just automatically assume that I was inherently better than all of them. Um, 
But you can't tell them that, okay? So, <clears throat> also, who are you? I've Have you ever killed any innocents, Sarayan? Um, no. Wrath, avarice, vanity. No. The one who bears the mark that you do, you certainly check all the boxes to one going somewhere completely terrible. Anything to say for yourself? That I, I, I was only doing what I thought was right. Is this true? Yes. In my heart, I thought that what I was doing was right. And to be honest with you, it was very difficult to come up here on land and have all of my assumptions that I'd made only three years of schooling challenged by real life experience. And Your voice you know, is small and pathetic. <laughs> the ones who matter don't hear you. You're the only and one And he in begins this to close the book. What is it? I want to see your book. <laughs> Show me your diary. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. I'll show you. No, you don't get any more of my secrets till I get some of yours. And he turns the book around and waves you closer. Sarayan approaches with a certain amount of um, of terror. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. But she moves forward nonetheless because curiosity is getting the best of her. She's definitely like craning forward, trying to get a good look at the book while still angling her body as far from him as possible. <laughs> Serene, you know those moments in life that haunt you later? Oh, and they God, can be small I? things yeah. <laughs> where you think those conversations you had where you think, gosh, I was such, God, I wish I said that differently or a, a mistake you made something the wrong thing you said to a person you admired that you can think of and it will make you flush even years later just thinking of how dumb you were doesn't matter All if you this. were a kid or an adult or anything they come back at the most the strangest times to haunt you here is a chronicle of every one of those both remembered and forgotten listed all of the things you would judge yourself for anything if you were to condemn yourself this is a list of those things in completion Ryan doesn't even wait to ask this question she just begins kind of leafing through the book perusing its contents um, you know, joke's on you, because I never forget anything <laughs> that I did that was stupid, so. Neither and does she... Persona. <laughs> and she visibly kind of has to choke down some vomit. <laughs> She's beginning to feel very ill. <clears throat> is, is it warm in here? Is it? Never mind. You're alone I... now. Farewell, former paladin. And you feel yourself <gasps> beginning to sink beneath the floor, your ankles being pulled into the floorboards as if you simply are ceasing to matter from the bottom up. And so by that alone, your How body is being pulled every day at school, <laughs> ceasing to matter. Back to the rest of you. My mic's you attached, so I can't drop it. A Sorry. squeal of shock that sounds like Saran coming from the side of the house over here. We don't see that. Oh, yes, okay, ping that Can again? you ping that again? Oh my god. Okay, I okay, 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 okay. I see yeah. it, I see it. I am out the door. I charge. Um, um, I kick down this Saran door. <laughs> Go on, roll to kick As, down the door. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Um, you you do, Saray, and you hear this sound of um, buckling timbers and um, uh, breaking wood as your knees are about at the level of the floor right now. Gosh. You all reveal an empty room and then hear more panicked squealing similar to Sarayan's voice. I am dashing down the hallway. I'm break down this door. 
And as you open it up, suddenly, Saran, you see your friend Mariah throw open the door and you feel like you are submerged into unbeing. And Mariah, you look in and see Saran just kneeling on top of a bare rug before an empty chair and an empty desk, just reaching for you in absolute panic. I'm stuck. I can't get out run to her and we'll try to get her up. I can't feel anything from my my knees down. I don't know what's happening. Um, As more eyes come to you, Saran, um, Mariah seeing you, just her laying eyes on you makes you feel more there. As more people come in and look at you, more people seem to recognize you. They know who I am. I'm a person. Again, you feel less forgotten and... You look down, your knees are no longer beneath the floor. Your feet are standing upon a rug again. You're kneeling down on it. You feel here again. (gasps) And the memory is very with you of what just happened. But the figure, the sensation of being forgotten so completely leaves you. Pull her up and then just just hold her in our, my arms for like a solid five seconds while I just gotta wait for her to breathing to calm down. I, I, I just had the most horrible. I don't even think it was a dream. It felt so real. There, there was a man, and he had terrible hair. And he, and he told me <laughs> that I'm a former paladin. And then I felt like I was sinking into the floor. And then I didn't feel real. I didn't feel real until you came. And and you 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 helped me. I I have to look for the book. And Sarayan heads towards the desk and begins rifling through its contents. Opening drawers, throwing All right, things make over a her rifle shoulder. check. Oh, hell also yeah. known as investigation. <laughs> hell yeah, brother. Um, while she's doing that, Heck I'm yeah. Just take a <laughs> we quick investigate look with MMGs, brother. <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick look around since I've got detect magic up. All right, my base roll was a seven. Um, I don't remember what my modifier is, so give me just a second um, for a rifling check. Uh, I'll, <laughs> not really so, knowing seven. what she's up to, <laughs> I will follow her kind of hesitantly over to the desk area and just kind of follow suit, also taking in an investigation check and hoping I can maybe help her with whatever the fuck's going on. Yeah, Sarayan is still so overwhelmed. Nope, I can't. And yeah, shut down that she's kind of just blindly throwing things. She's not even really seeing what she's looking at or she's just mm. looking I- for the book. I don't find shit. Um, As Serene is throwing things around, Melvin, you notice there is a magic presence of um, (laughs) school of evocation coming from a lower drawer in the desk. As you pull it open, you look and there is a lockbox, a sort of metal box Hey, um, I'm gonna take this over there and take a look at it. This is magical. Uh, feel free to keep rifling, I guess. What are you looking for? Okay. A book. So we've got a natural a to <laughs> investigation. Yeah, Saray, and what was your total on investigation again? Seven. Seven. Okay. If you put so, seven and six together, it's 76. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it's 76. Um, that's how math works. <laughs> 110 coronets played the air. Uh, and the, yeah, Mariah is just kind of going behind Sarayan, who is just like a Muppet throwing papers yeah. into the air and trying to sort them out, which. No, that's yeah. not it. No, that's not it. <laughs> uh, neither of you find the book you're looking for. Uh, Melvin has a lockbox, which looks relatively important, though. Um <laughs> I'd, I'd like to check it for traps before anything else. Sure. Does Sarayan yeah. notice the lockbox? 
I yeah. I said that I was taking it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that I, right, I offer Saran. And she begins to lunge the towards the lockbox. Nope. I, I like, interpose and things. offer her a sip from my canteen. Yeah. Takes a sip. Lunges. No, just nope. <laughs> Lunging sip. It's okay. It's okay, girl. You're fine. <laughs> Uh, that'll be a, t a 23 investigation to check for traps. Uh, yeah, it looks untrapped. It looks definitely locked as it is a lockbox. Um, <laughs> it's hey. one of the two parts of the item, but... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, Not to put too fine a point on it. You don't see any traps. Peter, that locks can be unlocked. It's true. Does the top open? If I just... <clears throat> It is still locked, however. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> did anyone did anyone see a key anywhere? I'll oh. make it open with wave. No, wait. I have a key. I don't know if it's for this, but I found a key earlier. Hold oh. on. Perfect. Hold on. Rain is poised. I rifle around in my pockets and I pull out a brass key. Does it fit? It does. Oh. It's perfectly. Damn. Clicks open. Which. <laughs> Within this um, lockbox, there are a number of documents. Uh, Melvin, you find a wand within it. And um, a couple other things. Um, a beautiful four foot long silver chain necklace. Um, seriously, silver chain links that just in a giant loop that looks like it would be maybe wrapped around the head in order to be worn. Um, the documents uh, are interesting. One of them appears to be a deed to the house and the land. And one of them appears to be a will. Ooh. And it goes with a book. I, Serene like to, sits in the corner. I'd like to take a look at the, the will. I'm reading over his shoulder. Okay. The will specifies that um, it names um, there is a, a a death certificate accompanying it with it um, that of one Lord Laurent Donner and passing all of his belongings as is accustomed to his wife, Theodora Donaire. And um, that is pretty much the extent to it that says the, um, the manor, the ruins of the castle and the surrounding lands. And the the deed matches this description? The deed, as you are looking through it, uh, matches, and you see that this was gifted to a family donor not terribly long ago. Um, it shows a brief lineage as it is passing. You see the authority of the Council of Brilliance, which is something you have heard of before, um, some of the most powerful in Dementlia. Um, have awarded this to the family Donner, um, this piece of land, um, having been ab previously abandoned. And it mentions some previous owners whose claim has been removed um, mm -hmm. after the castle remaining vacant for generations. Some of these owners include Lord Cordon Silvra, Dalk, Dranzorg, and Lady Mara Silvra, in that order. What was the first name? Uh, Lord Cordon Silvra. Okay. And these all have... The, the dates are included with the Donaire family. These all say dates unknown for the others. And yeah. Lady Mara Silvra is not 
a matching font. It seems to be almost scrawled into the margin. The plot thickens. Um, would every, uh, anybody mind if I look at the necklace? Yeah, go for um, it. Is, is the necklace magical? No, it is not. Sure, go ahead. Um, okay. DM, I have a <laughs> it's like question. only if it's. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I have a question. Sort of thinking back to the time that we spent in um, Dementlia proper um, before coming out here. Um, did we ever get a sense of like how long Cedra had been in rule? Like, not from Dominic, but like. You know how how I don't know extensive was the Cedra Denair rule of Dementlia? Like, do, do you understand weird, what I'm asking? Yeah, it's a it's a weird sensation you get that it kind of is just it's it, despite the the lineages and the complicated families. She is the de facto ruler for as long as anyone remembers, and that's all that really matters, is kind of okay. the sense. For as long as anyone can remember, and that's been the way it is for as long cool. as matters kind of situation. Okay. Interesting. So, the memory issue is an important one, it seems to me, at least. Like, I mean, we've heard that the issue of, like, Dominic not being remembered before and like memory of past deeds etc all the stuff that ha that we found the documents about in the um hospital this is all really sketchy how's that necklace uh can't you tell and i'm like just like draping it over myself yeah like, oh. there are ample opportunities for drapery uh for this because it is again four foot long chain and oh, it's just, yeah oh, yeah you can go nuts with it i look amazing and look it sets oh. off my skin so that's a choking good. hazard hey yeah great great saran is going through all of the bookshelves behind the desk now pulling things off the shelves investigating um. rifling <laughs> To see if she can find anything. Yeah, literally boomstick. Just blowing holes in the bookshelves. <laughs> Don't we have one? A boomstick? Can I investigate the bookshelves? Uh the uh, the bookshelves, you said? Yeah. Uh yeah. The ones around the, that. the room. Well, and you do have Serene's a boomstick, yes. While Serene's busy doing that, um, I'd like to take a look, closer look at this wand. Vision's a little clearer. I rolled a 17. Okay. Uh, you, is after looking through the books on the shelves here, you are saddened by the fact that it looks like whatever you saw previously is no longer here. No book. Did I find even anyone else's diary? Resembles it. <laughs> Anything else interesting, mayhaps? Um, and uh, by rooting around in here, you do find tucked into one of the drawers um, what you think is one of the books, but it looks like a journal or something that's been ripped in half. Um, you see the a binding puzzle. has been broken and um, the back half of it has been removed. But you are able to see the first half, which I will show to you. Um, some of you would like, if you would like to show this, or some of you would like mm. to read it. Um, I'll read it. Here's to be a journal penned by Theodora. Interesting. Um, guys, I I found a Theodora Theodora's journal. Ooh. Um, give us the dramatic reading. <clears throat> I haven't done this since. Uh, my my year seven play, but okay, I'm ready. <clears throat> <laughs> the young girl Cedra comes tomorrow to be Dominic's equal. His friend? 
cousin? Will we tell them the truth at any point? Or trust the bond of friendship to quench the flames of the past? The consensus seems to be to start anew. And then um, there's, there's a couple more, quite the relief. Dominic and Cedra are getting along quite, quite well, adjusting to the new living situation without issue. Neither seems to have any memory of the discontent. They're almost like brother and sister, truly. Perhaps the families were right then. Perhaps simply forgetting the iniquity of the past will mark the decline of our injustice towards each other. I can only hope the love of this home is enough. Um, and there, there's two more. Uh, no, oh my gosh, there's three more. Okay, so then uh, Dominic has me worried. These imaginary friends, these new games, perhaps too many knights, horses, and swords in his bedtime stories. Daenerys haven't been conquerors for generations. Now Cedra too. These strange games. Dominic was nearly hurt this time. And her assist, her insistence to just be like her Auntie Mara. These children's imaginations. What fables or stories they draw from is beyond me. And here's the last one. I'm told these are the moments to cherish when the children are young. I find myself wishing every day the world uh, every day would grow faster and leave these strange fancies behind. I. It's supposed to be they. She clearly yeah, was hasty and forgot the why while I she was I think she journaling. was probably <laughs> drunk. <laughs> that claw wine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Messes okay. you up. <laughs> so the kids were... Maybe the kids were communing with Mara seemed... and Dranzorg. Yeah. I guess that would make sense. And something went wrong. Do you think they were communing or I mean we saw that spirit just present itself to us before I got sucked into the bed. Do you think that true. maybe the spirits were presenting themselves to them specifically? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's something kind of I, I don't know, poetic about the conflict that we've clearly seen between Dranzorg and Mara presenting itself in a later generation, not necessarily blood related, but, you know, people who reside within this house, people who ostensibly are opposed to one another, but are being attempted to, brought to, get, to be brought together for some reason, right? That kind of opposition feels like exactly the sort of thing that like ghosts who are opposi in opposition to one another would go after. I wonder if we could find the other half of this journal somewhere else in the house. Nothing you're good at finding people's journals. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, only when they're handed to me. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Got him. <laughs> wow. You need a heal for that burn. Um, Ow. just as a point of curiosity, really quick, I um kind of meander over towards the the hearth in thought, lean up against the wall next to it, and I'm gonna unsheath my dagger, and I'm kind of want to like angle it and see whether I can like get a view of like underneath the um uh this part of the fireplace. Man. Like the fire's down here, and then there's the this bit. And it goes up into the chimney. <laughs> what the fuck this is called? <laughs> the flu? Eh, whatever. I don't want to stick thing. my head up there. So I want to see if I can get like a little reflective, like. I see what you mean. If there's a chimney. Ugh, where's doll when we need uh, make it? A, uh, make a perception check. Okay. Doll died. We'll just send doll up there. Oh my God. Wait, can you're he... right. Doll did die. <laughs> can doll come back? <laughs> well, yeah. It will. Just... Not at will, but yeah. Uh, 16. All can come back. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> looking up, you feel like you, you're kind of looking back and forth and you see what looks to be maybe a lever or something. And then off the corner, the very corner of the dagger, something seems to <laughs> skitter up higher into the chimney and the soot kind of falls down and then clouds your dagger like a black snowfall on the shining blade. Yep. 
I'm going to wipe that off on my pants and resheath that. We got company. So do we keep heading up? Um, I haven't seen another stairwell up yet, although we can need definitely to continue to um, I mean, there must look be an attic one. or something. Probably. I um, mean, we just have to look for wherever the servant quarters would be. Yeah. Oh, pick a door or any door, Creon. Aren't those um, usually like someplace damp and cold, like the, the basement? I will no, open this door. Uh, before we move this... on, DM, um, I was taking a look at the wand to see if there was an activation word on it uh, or something. Uh, uh, apologies. Um, mm-hmm. This wand... Ha. Uh, does not have any sort of label to suggest as such um it looks Whoa. almost like a melted candle like a long melted candle with little drips of wax but the wax is actually m- more like ivory and where the flame would be um in the shape of a little flame is a perfectly carved amber but translucent amber gem set to the top of it it feels proper for a spellcasting focus for you. Um, if you were to use such a thing, um, it would. You can tell that it is of workmanship; that it could be used that way, and it definitely is magical. Well, I'll, I'll identify specifically what it is later, but worth a shot to see if it had a label or something. Wouldn't that be nice if all magic yeah. items just had a had like a UPC, like a QR code oh, on the yes. bottom? Yes. <laughs> Melvin becomes the uh, the keeper of the Dewey Decimal System for magic yes. items. There you so you go. would go Dewey Decimal rather than Library of Congress. Interesting. Interesting. Ooh. All right. We're not getting into the library so science sass. debate tonight. No, we are not. <laughs> um. Prion, this room, sort of like the other, appears to be just a regular guest room um, with a beautifully set bed. Um, Again, the pillows, the sheets in perfect condition, everything just right on the bed. The rest of it in disarray. There is a vanity. The mirror is cracked. The cushion is um, bereft of all of its padding. Um, It looks... Mostly trashed, except for the compl- the beautiful bed. Okay, so who's going to disappear into the sheets this time? Brian runs I nominate forward, Priya. dives head first. No, I'm just nope, I-, <laughs> I, know, I was like, girl, you better not. I nominate Priya. Priya's standing by the door like... To go on a existential journey. On an excellent journey. Anything magic in here, Melvin? Uh, I don't know. Let me take a look around. I'm going to step just inside the door and take a look around. Step in and no, indeed, nothing magical. Uh, nothing that I can see. Let's move on. I go to here, across. Okay, yeah, right. as you open this one, you open up a, what looks to be a staircase leading to a higher floor. Well, we found the stairs and I'll open this one. A... Large bath occupies this room. Okay. Uh, uh, a huge oh, wooden tub. It's a fancy bath. Is here and a built-in fireplace. <gasps> fireplace here. And those of you looking, there is something sitting on the corner of the um, mantle or the uh, the mm-hmm. bottom part of the fireplace. There is it, it to be a tiny little piece of cake oh my god cake don't touch it i'm not gonna touch it it's cake in a bathroom why would i eat that but like (laughs) (laughs) is Um, is there anything magical in here is it a lie cake 
Um, nothing. I just love the cake. Overtly magical. No. I want cake now. <laughs> I, I do see another door in here, though. Mm-hmm. As well open it up. Oh, well, yeah. I'll open it up. It's an en suite. Um, it is an en suite. It is very nice. And this is, uh, it reveals a grand canopied bed. There is a headboard engraved with the faces of the moon. A wardrobe, writing desk, and a torn leather chair fill out the space, all bearing rampant mildew. A chemical smell, like ammonia or medication, lives here. I'll ask it its name. Don't, don't touch What's the bed? state of the bed in this room? Just out of curiosity. I'm not touching any more beds. <laughs> um, the sheets are in complete disarray, almost in a heap in the center of the bed, and it mm. smells terrible. Especially once it smells bad. <laughs> you don't want to sleep I... in a pile of filth? No. Wander back to the other room. Uh, the bathroom? Really quick. No, the other bedroom. Um, is there any indication in this room of like what kind of person slept here? Because you said that the other one seemed like a guest room. Um, and by Does that, as you determined, lit? this one is similar to that. Oh, okay. Um, everything is set up. I mean, looking through the drawers, they're ruined, but it doesn't look like there was ever anything kept in them, really. They were just open everything is set in a place to more of um it's it's more of a room of vanity than a room of living um it would be fine to stay in for a while but when you look in it's like oh everything's in the right place but in the at the same time looking around and seeing a room like that you don't get a sense of life or like someone lived in here at any point um, it's definitely a guest room here Open the door. And in here is a um, many windowed room. A small table for tea is here. Um, there are drapes over most of the windows that overlook the manor grounds. Um, that is about it. Um, do, do I sense any magic in either of these last two rooms? No. There okay. is not here. However, what is the tea this? set at the table looks okay. exquisite. Um, sorry, what are you looking at? What is this? Uh, it looks to be a stuffed animal abandoned laying on the ground. Oh, pick it that's up. sad. Okay. <laughs> That's the saddest Looks to part be of a, this entire building. A stuffed gray As fox. To work at a build a bear workshop. That is sad. It actually makes me a little sad. I pocket it. Don't touch it, it could be cursed. No. Yeah. You already put it in her pocket. Um I'm I'm gonna go take a look at this uh tea set. Okay. You wander over there and you see as if someone has taken a giant finger and just moved it aside, the curtains part. And you see filling the entirety of the outside window a giant eye, as if a creature larger than you can ever imagine is just peering inside a tiny little dollhouse. Please make a constitution saving throw. Gross. <laughs> Everyone? Melvin, I think. That's Melvin. Miss Melvin. Good, because okay, get that out of my cart. I don't want it. That's a uh, 14 plus 2 is 16. Okay. Um, you are worried sick for a moment. You almost freeze in place looking at this giant eye. And then the finger withdraws. The curtains slowly drape shut. And you are unaffected by its gaze. Uh, did, did, did you guys see that? Anyone? Did it? Did no we one else saw that? it. <laughs> Say what, Melvin? No. What are you talking the, the about? The giant did, eye did outside Mel the window just now. Did Melvin say something? I'm still in this other room. I don't even know what's going on. Melvin's seeing looking. eyeballs. 
through the uh, bookshelves in this room. Yeah. Um, Teresa, you hear a knocking behind you, a kind of screeching sound. Ah! And you see an arm with three elbows kind of scraping nope. at the stone that withdraws for a moment and then reaches down and places a, a small little hand pie at the bottom of the fireplace before withdrawing up, snaking up. You don't do ham pies. I mean, I, I do love a good pork pie. Um, must be said. Uh, I'm gonna... Not me. Talise is definitely gonna, like, get closer to it. It smells really weird. good. I bet it does. I did not have dinner. Probably pork. <laughs> All this cake and pie. I want food. It's now. pork belly, in fact. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so damn hungry. it. Now I really want pork belly. <laughs> um, oh, damn it. I'm just gonna... Does anybody... Anybody hungry? Do you guys... Would you guys mind if, if I maybe, like... I look in the room. Don't eat that. But I'm hungry, Prion. You have rations in your pack, damn it. I don't want to eat them. They're the same that I always have. A witch is coming down the, the chimney to give you food, and you want to eat it. Yeah, Go, don't we want to talk to her? Go the ahead. Bathroom pie, but you'll eat this random one? Eat it. I'm just, it's not in a bathroom. Um, I'm going to, like, get closer to the, to the fireplace. I'm not going to touch the pie, but... I'm gonna like wave my hand at the fireplace a bit, so if she's up there, she can see me, and just be like, um, um, "Wow, you are ballsy as fuck." As you're alone I'm by the fireplace, you hear words just kind of echo down. Don't be afraid of it. Take it if you want. It's for you. I'm stuck here just like you. Easy to well, it does. It, it, it does smell delicious. I think you did a really good job baking it or making it, however you did it. Um, Billing. But, are you talking to but, her? Yeah. Do you want to come in and help me, or are you just gonna judge me at the doorway? Um, so we actually were wondering if we could maybe talk to you. And um, oh God, you know, I just I sound. Just we're all the same here now. Written deep in the ground like tall trees and the lumberjacks come to render us logs and throw us down the rivers of time forgotten in the mills of nothing he's fun sweet That's fuck beautiful. that was poetic and i need to remember that i was like God, no that right was, i'm like that was beautiful oh, shit what um, what was beautiful Prion, we're essentially all about to get like harvested and somehow we're all stuck here in this house and we are we are trees and there is a lumberjack coming to and we're all going to be forgotten in this damn you're house. You're just as crazy as Sarayan. <laughs> I've not eaten the pie yet. I'm not crazy. The witch in the fireplace who's baking things. Who you're talking me. to? I My name what? out your mouth. Come over here. Come over here and smell this delicious pork belly pie. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it's pork belly. Well, Brain's it's about something to throw that hands. smells like pork belly. It's delicious smelling. She's being a nice host, and then she's reciting poetry to me, to me, and it's really kind of freaking me out a little bit. So could you come over here, maybe? You're freaking me out. Stuff? Come away from well, there. Come come pick away. up a cup from the tea set. Sorry. That was like... Bye, witch lady. I've got, but we still need to talk to you. I've got Melvin in here talking about a big eye, and I walk over and I open the curtain. Reveals a misty landscape beyond. Aye, three crazies. Well, Prion, can I just pick up the pie? Because I feel like you guys won't believe me unless somebody eats can, the pie. I don't want to eat the can pie. You, like, I just I... leave the pie. Leave Bye the pie. pie. I dare you to eat the pie. Oh, I dare you my. to eat the bathroom cake. Gods above. <laughs> I'm not a paladin anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I start messing with the <laughs> tea set. Does anything happen, or is it just pretty? No, it's really pretty. It's really nice. Bye, pie. Guys, do you want to take bye, a tea set? Bye. Why do you you get the tea set and I don't get pie? As I I'm said, not going to eat porcelain. Take the right. pie. Eat it. If you if you had a take and you saw this, like if you had a uh, a prize yeah. ship that you captured and this was in a uh, captain's cabin, you think you could fence this for at least 150, maybe 200 gold at a good port. So in the pack it's, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Just dump it in. Here it's shattered. <laughs> That's <laughs> we'll put not it back how together bags of holding put it back together. I have a yeah, bag of yeah. holding. Melvin, you can fix this, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot of mending. Mending is free. <laughs> yeah. Are we going up the stairs? Or do you well, want to go and eat do... your pie? Well, I do want pie, but don't we also want to talk to the witch? Isn't that part of what no, we're just going to kick her out? Doing? No, it, well, why don't we, we said nothing about her, having a conversation. I don't trust people who put food on fireplace mantles randomly and have multiple elbows. Okay, well, the elbows aside, the first point at least is a good... <laughs> Sorry. She's a one-piece character, what can I say? Um, you know, the, the, the elbows aside, well, I, I have to agree. That first point is a good point. And I think that's you in my search for speaking. Okay, no. <laughs> One piece. Um, more than two elbows. She's from the long arm tribe, okay? Don't judge her. Hell yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Fine. Let's go upstairs. I but, take I mean a swig from my flask and I leave the room. <laughs> Okay. My job here Where is done. Where are you all going? Up the stairs. I want to go assuming. upstairs. Let's go. Go yeah. up the stairs. There better be pie. Um, okay. but before oh I go God. up the stairs, there better be a can better I knock pie. on the wall here? I've You're going to what? Track. I've been keeping track of how much space that, that back stairwell takes up and how much space there is, and it doesn't seem to match up, so I'd like to knock on the wall here and see if it's hollow. Um, Based on your assumptions, there would probably be chimney space there. So it's not hollow. Or at least it doesn't sound hollow because I'm knocking on wood and then there's brick behind there's it. There's stone probably. behind it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. And you all can head up to the next level. Up, up, up. The stairs. Up, up the stairs we go. There's a cave. Up, up, up. And then a tunnel. A tunnel. Tunnel. <laughs> She's very hungry. She's <laughs> um, so starving. She's always hungry, precious. Uh, <laughs> Build a bear should have done. Build a bear should have put a Shelob in their Lord of the Rings set. They should have. I didn't realize build that Build a Bear even had. Had. They should have yeah, done. Know, right? They should have had a a Frodo bear where you squeeze it and that little like bit of saliva comes out his mouth when he gets stabbed. <laughs> they do have a Frodo, Dude, and it does tickle have me. A <laughs> tickle me, Frodo, and then the, just the little no, the it's spittle not tickle comes it. out. It's spittle me elbow. <laughs> spittle me elbow. The elbow. Oh my god! <laughs> it all comes back to the elbow. <laughs> All elbows all the time here Let's on LSRPG. Wake up and wish he'd never been born. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well now I'm gonna have to watch that tonight again. Oh God, it's so long. I open okay. the door. I know. Oh, Prion, yeah, this seems to lead to what you can only assume is the roof. More stairs. You're only allowed to assume that it's a roof. Stairs. That's stairs. It. Stairs. I open this door on the on the right. You open up into a massive playroom. Oh my god! Clues, clues galore. The way you said playroom. Play what? <laughs> I know it sounded like it was going to be like, something. I was like a very... massive what? A massive what? Playroom. Now, is there actually yeah, a brother. green glow coming from the other door? 
Yes, there is. This oh. nursery lies in disarray. Toy chests, disarray. bookshelves, and chairs sized for children lie in splinters of colorful wood. Mishappen characters and bizarre animals smile from hand-painted murals covering the walls. This looks like a place where Sarayan could maybe find either the book about her uh, multitude of sins or the other half of the diary. Um, so that's Melvin, the first thing she's going to look for. Would you like an assist on uh, checking this room? Because this seems like it would be ripe for clues. Uh, it, sure, I'll also look for anything magical while I'm doing that. I rolled a 10. Remember you have, Assuming um, it's only oh, been 10 for minutes. Rifling? You've got less D6 than 10 minutes. inspiration as well. Ooh, I would I like to also have D6 that. Yeah. <laughs> do you know the easiest way to remember that? I think it was Alias that said it. Is grab yourself a crack of D6 and put it right next to you in front of you and you remember you've got a D6 inspiration. That's just good business. Good idea. Ooh. All right. I will so someone's investigating? Yeah. I am. I'm helping. I'm also looking for that journal and the Rifle. book of her sins. I got a 14. Do you think they would keep a sin book in a playroom? You never know. Oh my <laughs> god, there's an, an identical wolf or fox doll here on the ground. Yeah. I'm shook. Terrifying. Terrifying. Um, that'll be a total back. of uh, 27 for investigation. Damn, son. Yeah. Wow, that's very good. Um, I used my D6 inspiration for that one. So, you notice here, this roof is arched, and there's some beams, and it goes... You know, the, the arched roof goes almost 20 feet high at its peak, and you're kind of looking around. You see on the wall, actually, there's some smudges of what look like footprints going straight up the side of the wall um you also notice these toys are just you know strewn everywhere and uh with your detect magic up you just detect a strong sense of abjuration magic from the door to the north and as you are kind of thinking oh that might be it and you kind of approach you see it simultaneously a bit of soot tumble down from the chimney and as you are walking towards this door emanating with magic a stuffed purple dragon is sitting there near the door and his eyes light up will you play with me mister it says towards you uh what do you want to play um um I have a new favorite game. You will play with me? What's the game called? Um, um, it's called, it, it's called, it's called Play Mine. Uh, how do you play? Well, so it's, it's one that, 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 that my friend showed me and wh whoever can run around and grab the most things um is the winner and the other person has to get bricked up in the closet that's where the losers always go I they get bricked the up door. in the closet is is that the closet yeah, but we can use any wall. We can brick you up anywhere. It's fun. Do you want to see? Uh, n not really. I don't really want to get bricked up somewhere. Okay. You, that uh, was creepy as fuck. I turn around and look at Mariah and say, uh, uh, I think that that area that was bricked off downstairs probably has some people behind it Great. you think love that and then and, uh, mariah as you're walking past that same silver fox the eyes light up hey do you want to play a game 
Depends on the game I've been known to play a lot. Um, do you want to play Man in the Wall? <laughs> um, is there anything more to it than one of us goes into the wall and gets bricked up? My auntie Mara told me, told me it's 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 our favorite game. Um, all we need is a blindfold and a gag for you, and then we'll play Man in the Wall. Oh, your auntie Mara uh, teach you lots of games? Mostly just that one. Does the voice sound like vaguely young girlish or like young yes. boyish or is there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you play this game with a lot of people? Mostly just my brother. Yeah. He doesn't like it. He likes to play mine and I like to play this. Do so you, uh, is your brother uh, Dominic? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You're Cedra, <gasps> right? Shh. Shh. The hungry one's here. Shh. And the eyes just vanish and go dark. I looked at Talise. Are they talking about you? Shut up. My stomach's not. And loud. as the suddenly. All the toys kind of shift in the room. Hungry one, hungry one, hungry ones, hungry, 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 hungry one. And they all just kind of, as if everything was being held aloft by just a bit, every toy in the area, every bit of stuffing, every chair just kind of slumps down a little bit and shifts into stillness and falls for a moment. And a dread chill fills the air. And we will go on our break oh, I was going to say I bring on the hungry one and I pull out the axe yes indeed the hungry one likes that um, Yum. please uh, we will be just gone Thank for you, a Elena. quick 10 minute break my friends uh, we will be back in <clears throat> imagine that 10 minutes uh, if you haven't so yet hard. please enter exclamation mark giveaway in the chat we are doing a giveaway for uh, two sets of um St uh, store credit to krakendice.com. You can win some amazing Kraken Dice by hanging out with us till the end of the stream. So um, please stick with us. We'll be back in 10 minutes and resume our story from there. Ah, don't go anywhere. And welcome back. We are in the final floor, the top floor. Well, not final necessarily, but the top floor of the haunted house, wherein lies the answer to the mystery of Cedra and Dominic here in Dementlieu. Now, as you all are standing in this room, cluttered toys lying scattered about, all of them seem to shift and then go limp, and they all whisper almost simultaneously, the hungry one comes. And sure enough, you all kind of turn your eyes thinking this must be what you've been waiting for as a little bit of soot falls from the chimney. And then a massive <laughs> bit plops down and everything in this room becomes heavily obscured. You all <laughs> choke against the awful soot from this chimney. Uh, please make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. Please don't laugh when I make my constitution roll. <laughs> I'm use a crack in there. I'm scared to roll on the thing. Laughing at myself that time. Uh, let's see here. That's a natural 20. Like, this is serious. It's time for real die. I wrote digital and got an actual 20. Mm -hmm. I'm so special. I'm going to put my faith Did in Did you know? It's true. Um, so it is not a big one. You kind of just <coughs> cough against this uh, soot. I wrote another um, natural Sarayan. 20. <laughs> Sarayan, what is what was yours? 15. Okay, you all say if you take one point of poison damage from this soot entering your lungs, I know, big deal. Um, I got a 12. Ow. 
and then I will ask you to roll initiative as you see standing on the ceiling um, <laughs> feet perched there wow amazing <laughs> um, and looking down at you from 20 feet up is a creature made of lanky stick like long arms and it seems to just sit up there looking at you oh my gosh you guys just what the is fuck this four is? natural 20s oh in God, initiative this, right now this got wild. Um, <laughs> three in initiative one was the uh, con save i'll break it believable uh con save was just against uh poison so i got so a you have all saved save. from that um, did a 12 save yeah did a 12 save peter uh, yeah, 12 was the DC. Oh, okay. Not a hard one, but you, you uh, I guess you just barely made it. Look at, <laughs> look at you. Um, as I, excuse me, I have to bring up this other bit here. We are ready to uh -huh. fight this chimney witch. Are you? The initiative rolls say so. Most of them do. The hmm. dice tell a story, y'all. Oh, they do. I haven't heard my quote in ages. Thank you for saying that. Oh. So. <clears throat> um. Oh, as you see this you see this creature sort of emerging and reaching down towards all of you and then a number also of the uh, oh well i'm thinking of it to prion this choking taking this one point of poison damage <sighs> oh it makes you mad it makes you so mad please make a wisdom saving throw i rage <laughs> Hilarious. uh peter the the thing came out of the fireplace or just from Please the ceiling? Day six. It seemed to have oh, come out of the 14 total. <clears throat> um, oops. Sorry. I did this wrong. <coughs> um, Someone else is uh, by the chimney witch. Yeah. Does Sarayan have an aura yet? Sarayan does. I can activate that. If I'm not a fake paladin. <laughs> if I'm not a former paladin at this point. <laughs> you are not. That guy lied. I'll fight what him. Is the, what is the radius of your aura, Sarayan? I think 15 or 10. 10, Sorry, 10. 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And then that paladin life. Hmm. In that case, um, what is your bonus? You, the rage seems to course through your bones, but you're able to suppress it. Um, assuming, what's your charisma score, Saran? Assuming you have a charisma bonus. 14. Oh, yeah. So that would bring you to a 16 prion, which negates the this effect as the axe makes you want to just lose all control. But you're able to keep control. And with all of that done, natural 20s and all, um, Melvin, you are first up. Uh, you notice these toys have kind of come alive and these without they don't have the gentle amber look but a number of these toys have come up and their eyes have flashed red and you hear um uh some you hear little mechanical voices saying donairs i smell donairs i smell donairs as these little Dolls on um, unicycles <laughs> start uh, careening around, as well as these little manufactured toys that look like this start to jaunt around the room happily. Melvin, it is your turn. And you said that the chimney witch was on the ceiling? Mm-hmm. 
not in the chimney. Weird. The chimney which okay. seems to have emerged. Okay. I don't like that. All right. Um. Well, I'm going to fall back on old reliable to start with, I guess. Um, I'm going to uh, grab a, a tendril of ink and, and lash out at the, the chimney witch with uh, Tasha's mind whip. Um, I need an intelligence save, DC 15. Uh, I have failed. Alright, that'll be ooh, 14 points of psychic damage. Ooh, that's a that's a nasty that's whip. A big roll. Yeah. And um on its next turn it must choose movement action or bonus action. It only gets one. Um and then I'm okay. going to back up because I do not want to be right here. It seems like a bad time. Um, okay. I will risk incurring an attack of opportunity. It is twenty feet up and it does not attack you opportunistically oh, even better <laughs> prion um damn <clears throat> i go and stand here and hold an action to cast booming blade okay which means uh, how does this work i mean I can, I've got a Warcaster now, so... Do I hold an action just to hit it, or...? No, so if if you have Warcaster, then you it's that you can cast the spell on the Attack of Opportunity, yeah. right? So it... Holding an... If you hold an action on your turn, then you use your reaction to take that held action. So it's kind of a moot point. To it's like the same thing. So you could use your action to dodge or do something else if you wanted yeah. to, and then you could still take your reaction to attack with Booming Blade as an opportunity attack. Okay. Yeah, so you should like actually do something on your turn. Yeah, well, it's 20 feet up, so I'm trying to think. The toys there, are on the floor. There's a toy. True. Okay, I will go and... Maybe they're friendly toys. Everything... It might be yeah. Friendly, yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will just go and axe the toy. I will go and axe him a question. Um, where are we? This is with Boomy and Blade. For twelve to hit. <clears throat> twelve hits. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, 11 damage. Okay. And I hit it again. Do, 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 do. 25. It definitely hits. For 12 damage. Nice. All right. You bash this thing around and it kind of is sitting there and barely wobbling. <laughs> It is a well-constructed toy. This is a proper Lego. This is not knockoff. This 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 ain't no Duplo enemy right here. Um, anything else, Prion? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, Sarayan. Okay, uh, Sarayan will move into the space directly in front of the Lego toy and uh -huh. try to hit it with wave um but first i will take a bonus action and cast divine favor cool <clears throat> Let me see. that gives you a d4 to all your weapon attacks yes yes that's neato indeed um all right and so here's the first one 13 Yep, barely okay. hits. And then plus D4, I'll roll for that. Plus one, so 14. <laughs> or um, 11 points, or 12 points of damage. Gotcha. It Not is, it matters, uh, I, guess. <laughs> I thought you were going to do it. it has, it's looking super at the end of its rope. Okay, Um. well, I'm going to hit it again with wave. <laughs> Go for it. Um. Let's see. 
And that's a 27 to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then plus 317. It clatters hit. apart into tiny little pieces onto the ground. <laughs> ah, fool. <laughs> that's your two attacks and a bonus action. Unless you would like to move. I think that's the end. So, yeah, mm -hmm, that should be it. All right. Beautiful. Mariah. Yeah, I don't like where I am in the center of this room filled with enemies. So uh, Mariah's going to scoochy scooch over towards the door, uh, mm -hmm. but staying within Saran's aura. And uh, what am I going to chuck at someone? Um, uh, going to look over towards this toy over here and scream out over at it. You're just a Duplo. Make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> the Carionet makes a save. Eight. You have been mocked for five points of psychic damage. Ah! And uh, the requirement of having disadvantage on your next attack roll. It seems resistant to the damage. Mm. Like it doesn't have a real brain. <laughs> Ooh, if only it had a brain. If only. That's it. All That's right. My turn. The chimney witch, the long, multifaceted elbows all reach out from the ceiling and cascade down towards multiple of you. Let's see, we'll use random at which one ignores one, two. It ignores Mariah, but an arm reaches out to the other four of you. Let's see here. Where'd you go? <sighs> Oof. Uh, Prion, I have a 23 to hit you. I whirl the axe around and it forms a shield. Nice. Oh, which takes me to armor class 24. Teresa, I have a 25 to hit. Rude. Yeah. Ow. Okay. Yeah. Ow. Um, you are grappled and restrained. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a 14 to hit on Saran. I believe will not hit and 18 against Melvin. Okay. Um, I, I will summon the ethereal book to block that as I cast shield. Okay. Gotcha. Two shields down. It will then, you will see the um, arm just grab at Talise and then suddenly yank her up and you will see this lanky neck, almost as many joints in its neck as it has in its arms and then its wide mouth opens and then uh, bites down oh, at This is all part Talise. of the same action? Wow. Yeah. Excuse me. Good lord. 18 to hit and you feel oh. the teeth sinking into your flesh Saran, or excuse me um, Talise, uh, 28 points of piercing damage. It was an 18 to hit and my AC is 18. It's meat to beat. Meat, meat, meat. Damn. And you are restrained in her long, lanky hand as she pulls you up to snack on you. I thought we were friends. Okay. And it has pulled you up <laughs> 20 feet into the air right next to it. All right. The carionettes. Two converge here, one comes towards Prion. Does that provoke an attack of opportunity or you're wielding the axe? I, so I carry a net by Prion. Uh, oh, good point. Uh, attacks with a 12. The one near Melvin attacks with a 14, which will miss. And then the um, dancey toy thing will attack with uh, 18, which I think also misses with your shield, right? 21 with the shield up. All right, so they all, all the little toys miss. Melvin is a bit surrounded by them. Just, at this just point, quickly, though. obviously, the witch had Tasha's mind whip on her, didn't she? So, she did. 
Yeah. That's why I asked for the clarification about a single oh, action. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the this is a big multi attack. Oh. Um a really big multi attack. Four attacks but that's it. plus a pull plus a bite. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's ex- that's actually what it is. Um, terrifying. Um, yes, yes, it is. Talise, you have been yanked up towards this hungry, toothy mouth, which has already taken a big old bite out of you. Um, anything you wish to do besides wishing you had taken that one last taste of pork belly pie? I know, I should have just had the pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You hear it whisper... Um, you should have left me alone. God, you're right. It's so unfair. Um, I would like to cast spiritual weapon, please. Okay. Spiritual weapon springs into existence. Where's my cutlass? Natural. I will have it appear in a moment if you will make go ahead and roll that attack. Yeah, let me let me roll that. I definitely have not rolled it yet. It's it's a nat one. It's a nat twenty. It's a nat one is what I hear. Yeah. It's a nat (laughs) twenty. I wanted to believe you in your the chicanery. Unfortunately, Nat One is not going to do it. Uh, um, anything else beans. for Talise? Bean sob hysterically. Um, I would like to cast. No, I can't do that. Yes, I can, because that's a bonus action. So then, can I do Word of Radiance? Um. You, you can, yes. It says, yeah, spiritual weapons. Uh, casty, casty. Is I'm just rolling seven today, cantrip. guys. It's a cantrip, okay. Yeah, Constitution say You're in I heaven. have rolled a twenty, unfortunately. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Just so you know, you can use an action to try and escape, as it is grappling you. But um, next time you have that option available to you, as it's currently trying to eat you. Um, I believe that's all for you. And we'll go back to Melvin. Um, well. uh, It's a little scary. I don't like that very much. Um, I guess... Yeah, I'm going to do it. I I uh, reach my hand out toward Talise, and um, a small uh, glob of ink is going to uh, drip off the end of my finger as a large um, bubble of uh, sort of springy ink uh, springs into existence around her as I cast Melvin's Resilient Sphere. Um. Interesting. So that puts her in a, a ball, right? If she chooses to, to fail to save, of course. But yes, it would put her in a ball. Nothing can go in or out. Um, I assume the spiritual weapon can stay outside of it because it's just around a single creature. Yeah. And she wouldn't be able to be attacked. She fails that She save. actually rolled the save anyway, but... Uh, yep. <laughs> Awkward. Talise, you find yourself enclosed... Boop, boop, like in a ball of force summoned by Melvin and I think then just whoo, drop to the ground. Does it stay aloft for any reason? The sphere is weightless. It, okay. As far as I know, it doesn't so stay aloft. Pre- presumably it would fall because of her weight once so the Talise, creature has to let go of her. you fall to the ground and take five points of bludgeoning damage but are no longer grappled by this freaky creature. Anything else for Melvin on your turn? Um, well, let's see. I guess I'll move over to, uh, let's see, there. That's probably going to provoke a bunch of attacks of opportunity, though. So, Heck yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Heckin' yeah. Uh, I have an 18. Uh, I will shield again, because I have okay, my reaction 14, back now. So that does not matter. Cool. They're trying to hit you with uh, feather pillows, though, so... <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Prion, your turn. Um... So I can't hit his up the hit the creature's arms or anything right now, no. No, that you could at one point if the, you could have hit the arm grasping Talise, but no, they've kind of withdrawn and are kind of okay. I will axe the one behind me then with a booming blade, and my seagull comes down and does the help action. Da -da -da. For a twenty-two to hit. For 19 damage. Yeah. Nice. And I hit it again. For 14. I'm um, 14, 14 does not hit this one. The ones riding the... Okay. Um, <clears throat> the ones riding the unicycles. The carionettes are a little more adept at zipping okay. around. And that's my action. Cool. Saran. I'm sorry, I should be prepared. I see it on the turn tracker every time and then I have to go in and unmute myself. I don't know. Okay, so. Just um, careful if you ever play a wizard because it's that but 20 times worse. <laughs> no. Um, I will, let me see, move forward one space, advance upon this creepy creature. It is up in the air, just so you know. It's 20 feet high. Well, lucky for me, I have a javelin. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. So I will skewer it like a kebab. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I will throw one of my javelins at it. Psych, they were the snack all along. <laughs> 21 to hit. Ooh, yeah, 21 hits. Nice, nice. Um... And would that still count with my um, my bip -bip -bip divine favor? Um, I believe you still have the spell going. It lasts like a minute. Yeah, right. Weapon okay. attacks. Yeah, go uh, ahead and roll a d4 to add that. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> um, okay. Because I rolled a nat one. Damage is damage. Damage is damage. Uh, and let's see then. Uh, Trademark, lawful stupid RPG. <laughs> damage is damage. TM, TM, TM. Um, so I do have the bonus action of Searing Smite. And it says the next time I hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, would that Yeah, so you cast count? that before the attack, and you can do that right now. You you can do that as a bonus action right now, and okay. if you're basically it's just your next attack that hits it up that applies but if the, i believe that's concentration and i don't know if your it other would, spell, yeah it, it would replace plus you just D4s. did a range attack and not a melee melee yeah yeah um i did it was well i guess it was a range attack yeah you can throw another javelin yeah so you i'll throw, throw another another javelin uh, let's see. And that is a 13 to hit. 13. It catches it in front of its face and then just crunches it in its hand and drops it down. Ah, beans. All right. <laughs> that is me. Mariah. That is so disturbing. Um, I will, I will look up at it instead, since I've determined that these, uh, carionettes and whatever these other motherfuckers are. Um, don't seem to have much up in the noggin, so um, I will direct my attention up Ooh. to um, elbows Ooh. galore and say, um, oh, golly, what do I say? Um, dude, you, you're just really fucked up. That's that's all I have to say to you right now. Please roll a wisdom save. Mm -hmm. I have a... 23, unfortunately. Okay, so take uh, no damage. 
I Any bonus action it. for Mariah? Let me sit in here. Nah, nah, Gucci. Okay, Mariah's hanging. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna scoot forward one step though, because I'd like to stay within Surayan's influence. All right, I'm going left to right. The yeah, thing is going to launch out its arms randomly. So, I've got Prion is one, um, Talise two, Mariah three, Surayan four, Melvin five, and Eolac six. So, two and three do not get attacked, and the rest do. Um, Who were to totally because it is numbers. hungry. Um, that was four. Uh, yeah. So Talise and uh, Mariah don't get attacked. Yeah. Uh, Has it got huge range? It does. Elbows, 50 man. foot. Elbows. 50 feet of everywhere. elbows. 50 feet um, of elbows. Prion, I have a 26. Hits. Uh, Sarayan, a 22. Hits. Melvin, a 10. Theolac, a 22. And it draws, yanks Prion, it yanks you up closer to it. It doesn't. And it doesn't. <clears throat> it what? How, how does it not? Because I've got a ring of free action. So I can't be grappled. Interesting. Okay. But as it right. tries to grab um, Sarayan, I will hit it. Okay. Um, you can attack the um, yeah the ten the arm that reaches down. Absolutely. Oh God. Missed. Unfortunately, twelve is not going to do it. Uh, and Sarayan then gets whoop, yeeted up towards the ceiling 20 feet up next to its mouth and it tries to bite you. Yeet that Yeet triton. That triton. <laughs> it's not the exact same thing. Does 18 hit a Saraian? Mm-mm. AC 20. Uh oh, it just crunches down on your armor. Unfortunate. Eolac is in a corner and there is a long arm just holding Eolac in place. Eolac is restrained. Uh, we are going to move in. Is it an we action going or anything to... to wink him out of existence? It is. Okay. It is an action. Um, Talise, you are in a bubble. You're not interesting to attack. So, Melvin, we have a carionette wheeling on up to you. Um... Man, I was hoping to that bubble might be attractive. Uh, so that will unfortunate. Miss. I have shield up still. Okay. Um, it's just like, yeah. And then let's see, Sarayan and no, we'll have a carrionette go towards Mariah. Uh, sorry, Peter. It's only ma against magic. Um, magic paralyzation and restrained. Sorry, so you would have hit me. Okay. Um, that's fine. You are restrained okay. in that case. So one will attack Mariah. Uh, Mariah, 21 for a silver needle. Please make a charisma save. Oh, sweet fuck. Um, it wouldn't happen to be the one that I mocked earlier, would it? Because that one would be making its attack at disadvantage, even though it was resisted to the psychic damage. No, that was no. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, I just thought I would check. A charisma, charisma saving throw. Thankfully, that's one that, that I have a better one. modifier on. Seventeen. Okay, you're good. Plus two. How much damage um, do I take? You're not cursed. Two points of necrotic damage. <laughs> oh. Okay. Casual, casual lack casual of curse two. here. Uh, Prion, this one can attack you with advantages. You are restrained. Yes. 18 doesn't hit, though, does it? No. Okay. And that's my carionettes done. Talise! You're trapped in a bubble. Ooh. Unless Melvin releases you. I'm a bubble, I'm a bubble. 
thinking about I'm a bubble, it. I'm a bubble. I'm a He's bubble. muted, so I'm muted. Yep, it's fine. Um, I can hear things through. We can hear through the bubble, right? I don't know. It's your spell. <laughs> it's your bubble. Well, it says nothing can pass through the barrier. So, I would assume not. In that case, I will. I will drop the bubble at the start okay. of Talise's turn. Yeah, Talise, you're free of the bubble. Wee! Yay! I appreciate it. Thank you, Bubble Master Melvin. So, Bubble Boy, I would. The Bubble Boy. I wasn't gonna say it, but I would oh, like I to. <laughs> Use my channel Heard divinity bully destruct- <laughs> channel divinity destructive wrath for damage on thunder wave. If I scoot my booty over here, boot scoot boogie, boot scoot boogie, boot scoot boogie. Thank you. So that should be for my. 15 foot, right there. 15 foot range cube originating from me going in, going towards the wall here. And I want to cast my thunder wave. Where are you, baby? Thunder wave, hiya. Baby. Bubble, bubble, I remember that game. Bubble, bubble, oh, with bubble, the little dinosaurs? Bubble. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Wow. So 15 foot, you could cast it above your head and get up all the way to that creature. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it'll also affect the, let's see, who else, who else do I have grappled? I forgot. Uh -uh. I'm restrained yet. Oh. Serene. And Serene. Oh. Her arms aren't big enough such that they wouldn't be affected? I've not been lifted though, have I? So. Well, because it's, she's on the ceiling, right? Just so you yeah. know, yeah, Sarayan has been brought up yeah. into chomping distance. Yeah. Um, I didn't move her, but she can handle it. She's good. here ish. Uh, yeah, I didn't get chomped this last time, so it's probably fine. Just you know, just don't fail your DC check. Your your DC check? That's like a con save. That's the word I was looking for. But you've uh... I knew what you meant. <laughs> You've uh, you've added your um, thing to that as well. Where you've not rolled yet. I don't roll on destructive wrath. Oh, okay. What does it do? Max it was a great damage. roll. It was, it was really well, good. Max damage, even <laughs> That's without almost max damage. Off that, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, yeah. one off of max. Okay. Yeah. So I had we're, horrible we're, rolls, uh, and now it doesn't matter. We're con saving, and Saran's included, I guess. So, ooh. I'm sorry, baby. Natural I didn't one. That I was so what have you rolled, Serain? She's muted herself on her roll. Seventeen. Too many tabs. Too many tabs. Serain, you have succeeded in saving versus your friend's spell. You still take fifteen points of damage. But you don't Ow. take the full like the creature does, and you also see the tendril that is grappling you <laughs> blasts apart, and you <laughs> drop and thud take. down to the ground. How much damage do I take from that? Five like, points of take... bludgeoning damage. So it's, it's right, so 16 20 points. points of damage from the spell because it's max damage. So it's a oh, you did max not a 31. it. Right. Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, you almost know, didn't need to. That's difference. like ridiculous. Like, I know. You, you, <laughs> I said it first and then I cast it. So Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. You know, if there was a way um, to measure. I was so proud of Serene's, my plan that I announced it. <laughs> Serene's health, I would say she looks at about half. But I mean, there's no real way to know. You joined right. me in the one What does that club. even mean? Exactly. What does that even mean? Yeah. Uh, Serene, do you make a bonus action attack by chance? Yeah, there's still a tendril to. reaching to Prion and a tendril reaching I mean, out to his bird. Does it knock it off the ceiling? And I get a, I get a bonus action with my oh, spiritual wait. weapon. Um, no, it doesn't. Right. Thunder wave but moves um, it, actually, the with that amazing thunder wave, the tendrils have all just 
burst into pieces. Uh, Eelax no longer is strained. Prion no longer is strained. Um, and it still stays very on nice. the ceiling, yeah? What? It still stays on the ceiling. Doesn't move yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, it got pushed like into the ceiling for oh, okay. Um, And then I get a bonus action with my spiritual weapon, right? Mm -hmm. well, you do. Yeah. Burst my arms into pieces. These are my last <laughs> elbows. <laughs> my god, yes, I love that. Why did it do that? That's annoying. It's yes. Yeah. There. What a delightful cool. human you are, David. Um, till he's seven. Um, uh, yeah. I. With your bonuses, I know that is still not going to hit. No, <laughs> it doesn't. the The bonus doesn't count on the spiritual weapon. I wish it does. It's your spell attack, but um, oh. seven on the d twenty still not going to do it. So we will go on to Melvin. Um, the ceiling in this room is twenty feet total. Over here, it's ten. It it slopes up to twenty. Here, it's pitched mm -hmm. um i don't think i can quite fit a fireball in that area without hitting talise so i don't think i will be doing that um i'm going to uh lash out at it again with tasha's mind whip um upcast to third level this time um, so I need another intelligence saving throw. Fifteen, I have... Wow, that's a terrible roll. Met. Oh, wow. Very sad. Did that even upcast? Third level. It did. You rolled a one, a two, and a two. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just an extra person. No, but it's 3d6 on a second level as well. Yeah. It, oh, it's a second person. It's just a second person. Oh, oh you, yeah, refund oh. that. You, yeah, yeah, that's I'll fine. Yeah, cast it at second level then. Screw that. <laughs> um, I've saved with a 15. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So. so you get half of that. So two points of psychic damage. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> or if anything it, else? Nope. That'll be it. Brian. Um, I still can't hit the creature out now. It's still... It's sitting on the ceiling its feet are on the ceiling and it's just it, it seems to be able to walk upside down like that you like upside down walking on the ceiling inside out uh, you like comes down elbows got this feeling to the one to myself and i hit that with an actual 20 oh boy Obviously, booming blade as well. Critical hit. I can't see my teeth into you. What? So that's 15, 23 Remix. damage. It is Remix. obliterating. And then as my action, I hit the one next to me for 16 to hit. Uh, that hits. For 11 damage. All right. Well, that's me done. And <laughs> Going two-handed with it. I like it. I'm always two Axe likes it too. It feels good. Um, Sarayan. You behave yourself and I point to the axe. Uh, Are you Sarayan? okay? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, gets up and dusts herself <laughs> off after falling to the ground. <laughs> Um, and would I have made a wisdom saving throw or is my spell gone anyway? Uh, you'll need to make a constitution On saving save, throw. Yeah. Let's see. Boop. 12 plus, I believe it's four. Uh, con. Yeah, so 16. That's good. You're fine. Yep. Still yep. have the spell. Awesome. Um, and so... This weirdo is still up on top of the ceiling. <laughs> um, is there any way that I could like, I mean, I'm not very good at climbing, but is there any chance I could like climb up something to get a better vantage point? Use some of my movement to try to do that. 
Um, yeah, you could um, attempt to climb up all of this clutter, perhaps. Um, okay. Your, it would. Um, it would be an action, take your right? action to jump yeah. and climb up and pull yourself up onto one of those beams yeah. with a athletics check. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try it, and I may regret it, but I am gonna try it. I'm looking forward to this immensely. Um, I am proficient in athletics. I'm very athletic, so. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, it's seventeen. It looked for a second like it was gonna be like an eight or seven. Yeah, Plus seventeen. Six you get is twenty three. Yeah, you are able to run and jump, climb up on some of this mountain of toys, and just as it collapses and gets to the side, you're able to stick your foot into the wall and grab the beam and haul yourself up and then you find yourself face to face with this awful looking creature great um and because i didn't use a melee attack i think that is it for me this turn that is correct mariah all right oh we're, we're gonna try this again um wait where are you where are you right now, Saray? And I'm a little confused about, did you move? She did. She there we go. Okay. did a little climby climb up a next little to self it. Yeah. I've readjusted myself on the map. Awesome. Understood. Thank you. Um, I feel a little safer in your bubble. In my bubble. Um, I would like to uh, continue laying into the um elbows galore creature um elbows galore. that sounds like a stage name um <laughs> it kind of does um yes and i i think i mariah racks her brain for anything that's possibly insulting to this creature <laughs> and merely comes up with you bet you don't know the difference between Puff pastry and phyllo dough. Please Vicious tell me the mockery. monster's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you a rough puff. <laughs> oh! <laughs> You're just Dang. making her more hungry. That guy knows his pastry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, wisdom save. I'm okay at these. I have a nine, though. Uh, seven points of psychic damage, man. And your next uh, attack roll is at disadvantage. Okay. Um, Saran, are you are you looking particularly unwell? Looking like I, if there were a way to measure it, would be about half my HP. <laughs> little halvesies action there. Okay. Yeah. Um. I uh, put a little melody onto the air for you uh, for uh, 10 points of healing. Heck yeah, thank you. All right. The next series of attacks. First one comes disadvantaged at Talise. Uh, 13 to hit. Nope. Uh -huh. A tendril hits Mariah for 26. Please. One Please. goes towards Melvin with a natural one for an eight. Um, Who did I miss? What am I thinking? We have two excluded. So we have... Prion and uh, Mariah. Oh, right. Okay. There's just one more. Eolac gets hit with a natural 20. It is restrained. Poor bird. And we will then reel in. <laughs> Who are we reeling in? Um, Mariah, you were mean. Um, I know. It's going to make you a shoe pastry and show you just how hollow your insults are and then take a <laughs> bite out of you. <laughs> okay. Uh 15 to hit. Um oh, 
Ooh. Hmm. That's close enough to my armor class that I'm going to give, um, as a reaction, cutting words a try. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I, uh, yeah. Oh, God, your pastries suck. <laughs> How do you so know bad you at let being me try insulting them? when I try? Oh my god. He's I'm tastes gonna like roll cardboard. A oh my god. Go for it. I rolled I need a more five. shortening. I rolled All right. a five. So that makes that's a five ten. Off of that attack. And that is less than my armor class of 13. Just okay. imagine the arguments that you and David have and the insults thrown. It's just. <laughs> Poopy brain. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, don't go through hey, it around I'm, language I'm a little like bit that, more Jane. creative than that. Come on. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a good thing we don't argue too much. Uh, Melvin, I have a 16 to hit you with my silvery needle. The carionette. Uh, meets beats, yeah. Two points of necrotic damage. Please make a charisma saving throw. Oh, I don't like that. Ooh, that's a five total. I'm not a very okay. charismatic person. Cool. All right, good to know. You feel like your body is... You feel less of yourself than you did before. We'll just leave it at that. And already Prion. Uh, I have a natural 20 for this creature to hit you. It does 13 points of slashing damage. Ow. And we're on to Talise. I would like to cast Prayer of Healing on everybody. Because I can see everybody. Ooh, that third level cast, though. That's a ten, yeah. ten minute cast, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's a that's a long that's a long boy. Yeah. So then, for my bonus oh, action, I would have my. No, that uh, takes ten like, minutes. No, it's like it's it's ten it takes minutes. ten minutes to cast it. You guys, it's almost like I haven't played D and D for a couple weeks, and I just can't remember anything. You have a mask. I had wounds? a brilliant idea to help you. Yeah. Uh, casting time, then I will do that one instead. Screw you yeah. guys with your rules. It's Everybody take four. <laughs> okay, you know what? It's better than nothing. <laughs> damage is damage, healing is healing. Aggravating. And then... Nice. 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 Aggravation, right. though healing. <laughs> Okay. So that's your, um, and then your action so is the, a word of radiance. What's yeah. the range there? So the creature is up on the ceiling. Oh, that's a five foot range for that. Everything's going wrong. I have these brilliant things that I've mapped out and then nothing works. Fine. We're going to do sacred flame instead. Okay. So deck save from <laughs> you're doing the big creature up top. Yes. Everybody okay. can handle the little ones. They're fine. I have a two. Yay! Eat eight. <laughs> eat eight. And as eat Talise, eight eaten. As Talise is doing that, I'm going to shout over, Talise, back up a bit. Scoochie, 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 scooch. When he says to scooch, I scooch. All right. To these scooches? Mm hmm. Scoochie tooch. I scoochied. Melvin, what's up? What you doing? Um, I'm going to dip my, my fingers into that pouch of catalytic, catalytic liar's dust at my waist that I haven't used in forever. Um, uh -huh. And then I will be uh, flicking a ball of ink at the ceiling. Um just far enough away from Serayan to not hit her, I think. I should be okay with a 20-foot radius cross. circle. Um, interesting. We'll get a 20-foot circle going here. I hope. You're thinking sort of off in the corner, kind of? 
I'm very yeah, I'm hoping about how you're doing this. for it to end right before Serene's circle, and it'd be against the wall, so it's only 20 feet out. You're still going to get Talise in that. Am I still going to get Talise in that? Yeah, she just backed up what? further into the room. When, even though it's 20 feet up in the air? Talise has also got... This is a 20-foot radius. It's... So okay. I don't really know how you do this. <laughs> yeah. Without... Mm. Damn it! I mean, I thought I she just laid damage on the party. Uh, uh. <laughs> Melvin, uh, go down one. Oh, uh, and and again. Then it hits. Do it. Oh. Mm. Okay. Do it. <laughs> it's been so long since I heard. This that. is this is the Launching this is the house of, the of intentional fireballs on your comrades. Apparently, that's what's I mean, going on. I'll do it. Mine wasn't a fireball. Uh, that'll be a radiant the, fireball with extra force damage. I think you missed it. It happened to me in the basement. It cool. Uh, I mean, we like to burn things. Fire. We haven't burnt a lot this time. So third level, fireball, please. Cast into the BTT. Thank you. Plus 2d6 of force damage. Um, that'll be 35 points on a failed save, or half as One much two. on a save. I cast Absorb Elements, and I use my inspiration that I've got to do my deck save. Um, 35 total. Wowzers! Uh, what's your bonus, Sir Plus two, is it? My attack bonus? No, for being in your no, bubble. Oh, 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 for the being in my aura. aura. I, think, uh, I beep, think I fouled it anyway. Beep, 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 beep. 15 is the DC. God damn it, where is it? The little creatures succeed, but Chimney Witch herself is going to take the full 35. Yeah! And all of yeah, the limbs two. grasping the creatures and restraining them around you will suddenly fall and be obliterated, and little elbowy joints will start to regrow as you watch, but none of them are affecting any of your comrades. She's a titan. So you take the full you, you take the full ten right, Prion, and then half of yeah. So let me add back what I just took then. Um, so half of that is is twelve. So so I take twenty three. Correct. Twenty two. Twenty two. There we go. Dump. Um, and half of plus the do that can't. Resist this. Sorry, so uh, twenty, thirty, half of thirty-five is five. Sorry, uh, seventeen. All right. And I, I they don't think this one the, is um... so close to dead. This is on his last legs too. This one succeeded and looks halfway. I don't think the Catalytic Liar's Dust extra damage can be halved with a successful save. I didn't halve it. Right. Okay, good point. All right. Because it's dealt after or in right. addition. So. I should know I made up that item. <laughs> uh, Cool. That is <laughs> indeed how it works. All right, cool. Uh, Anything? else melvin you have Sorry, destroyed Brian. all the tendrils and it's almost it's fine done your turn Prion. um i will throw two javelins up at the creature uh one with eolac flying in first Do -do -do. for a 22 to hit it's, it's, did you roll a disadvantage? Disadvantage? Well, it's above me, isn't it? It's a oh, different it's... weapon. Uh, armor class 20, sorry. Uh, still hits. Five damage on the okay. witch. And then I throw another one. Five. 
For 25. Ooh. <laughs> Jesus. 25 at disadvantage. Hits. Yep. Uh, Another five. That last javelin, <coughs> it f wobbles and drops and <coughs> splats down to the ground, and each elbow seems to reduce itself as it its limbs slowly get shorter till it's just hands on a small body which seem to recede within its neck until it's simply a mummified head laying bare on the ground oh. yum um, okay so still two more is it dead dead or mm -hmm. okay I action surge and hit the one next to me mm Hmm. 14 to hit. Uh, 14 hits. Uh, 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 this is with Booming Blade. For 19 damage. Ouch, yes. And this one shatters. And I move to here. And take my action. Du, du, du. 23 to hit. Hits. For 11 damage. Eh. Hey. Ouchies. Dump. Sarayan. Well, Sarayan is uh, feeling pretty annoyed that she got all the way up here and now just has to scurry back down. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, I will. Oh man. Okay. Um, I think I can throw my javelin at this one. <laughs> so from up from there, my vantage sure. point. Yeah, up on this pile of stuff, I will throw my javelin. You have the high ground. Yeah, the moral fine. high ground and the literal high ground. <laughs> I am justified. Just fine. Let's see, just 15. Fine. Uh, 15 just hits. All right, and I still get my D4, unless it's been more than a minute. Nope, it hasn't been more than a minute. All right, and that's a four, so 14. And this one crumples down with that last javelin, and it seems yeah. at this point all the enemies are defeated. Melvin, you feel a sense of relief as this sort of felt like something pierced. If, the, if your soul had a, was a balloon, something had pricked it, and you felt yourself slowly leaking out, and it was uncomfortable, to say the least. You no longer feel that. Oh, that was horrible. I don't. I don't want to repeat that experience. Any of that. I will never, ever, ever let a witch live in my chimney. Did we brick her in the closet? Oh. So there's just like a mummified head on the floor, right? Yeah. Can can mm -hmm. we burn this? I like to ash. I could chop it you in half first. Do Do you want me to try? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Just Just poke it with some fire. <laughs> I get a natural twenty on my firebolt. <laughs> yes, you can destroy the um, head without any issue. I think that counts as eviction. I, I'd say so. Yep. Should we go see if we can um, talk on the planchet or on the spirit box? Spirit box. I've been playing a lot I of mean... phasmophobia. Is, is there any chance we can get some healing first? Absolutely uh... not. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I while uh, Prion's being a a little whiny boy. Uh, I'm going to go listen at this <gasps> door. <laughs> Just want to see. Uh, make a perception beyond check. It. Beyond it. Uh, 18. Um, 
dead silence beyond. Interesting. Can I, can I, can I heal everybody now? Or are we gonna keep listening at creepy doors for a bit? My listening doesn't preclude your healing. I was just like, I don't trust those doors to not do something now. (laughs) All right, let's get some healing done. Wow, that was helpful. Uh, So are we like hanging out for 10 minutes then? Can I cast and walk on this? Like, no. I'll sit in the room. Curious, Mariah. Do you touch the door when you no, walk up to I it? Just, I just kind of look at it, put my ear close. <clears throat> but not touching? Yeah, I just kind of get my hands in my pockets. Like... Okay. Yeah. No, you don't hear anything. I'm feeling much better. Thank you, Talise. Hi. Thank you. Oh, fun. So we hang out here for a little while then. I Maybe will. you could talk to the ghost kids. I will second. Yeah, hey, I do. I definitely will sort of wander back over towards the um, the toy that had spoken to me earlier and give it a little nudge with my toe and see if it wakes up again. Um, you kind of see the eyes. Who don't wanna? I'm gonna be in the safe place, and they. Okay. Where's the six six? That's a great question. I'm having a little deciding uh, trouble deciding whether it's behind a bricked up wall or not behind a bricked up wall. Um, since the sort of ethics surrounding bricked up walls with these kids is a little bit fucked. (laughs) So anyway. Oh, did did Melvin burn the chimney witch? Yes, correct. Quote. Like, is is it ash? Is it gone? Completely gone. Amazing. <sighs> All she wanted to do was give you pastries, but you didn't eat them. Okay, could well, I, could I, I like that's not true. That I don't trust witches who just want to give me pastries. This is two for two, Peter. They're the best kind. On sketchy pastry delivery both of them. people. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's face. <laughs> yeah. But like, would it be okay to go get that pie now? No. I mean, if you really want to. I oh, doubt yeah. it's very good, though. Can you imagine how that's many dead bodies that's made from? When we get back to Salt Marsh, we like can have fun. a nice big fish fry or something, and Serene doesn't have to eat fish if she doesn't want to. But do you eat fish? Oh, have we I talked have about no your problem. dietary yeah. restrictions? I have no problem eating fish. Okay. I suppose that makes sense. Melvin. That would be most of what's available down below. The but door. Y- yeah. Is it magical? Well, obviously, it's growing green. I I would assume so. I, I don't have my, my detect magic up anymore. It'd take me about 10 minutes to put it back up if you want. Well, just best to take precautions. I mean, mm-hmm. you could do it while Talise is... Um, Praying upon us. That's a good point. I'll I'll sit down cross legged and start papering over my the lenses of my glasses with paper mache. Cast detect magic again. Okay. Why is this place so fucking creepy? You are, you all are just sitting amongst all of these toys. Maybe a bit paranoid that one of them will move again. None of them do. Yeah. And um, as Melvin, your detect magic goes off and you look around, you do detect magic on to the south of where you are. And if you move around the room, you do detect heavy abjuration magic from the door. Do you want me to open the door to the south? 
you said there was also magic from the south, Peter? Mm-hmm. So down here? It is locked, but the um, key that you found in the study below will open it. And reveal a family room. Um... There's beautiful, rich furniture here surrounding another fireplace. It's mantle lined with some dusty knickknacks. Above it hangs a portrait of a stiff but handsome family. What do they look like, Peter? Are any of them cute or. This looks to be an old portrait probably here before um, the current occupants or not the current occupants but maybe of generations past um, the styles are vastly different from that you currently see in Dementlieu so ancestors of the Donaires very likely huh. okay Melvin shall we have a pass at the room uh, yeah, I thought I detected magic down here, so... Yeah. Well, we'll investigate, we'll see what there is to yeah. be seen. That's a good idea. Yeah, so as you look around, there is, um, in the corner of the room by the door, um... Oops. I did a wrong thing. Melvin! Oh. Your uh, sense of detect magic extends all the way over to this room where you actually sense the magic. <laughs> um, where is this? Is oh where my that God. is. All, uh, oh, all the way over God. here. Yeah. Well, wow. Investigate the room anyway. Is yeah, we'll take a look around still. Might as well. Um. Yeah. Please make an investigation check to poke around. Uh, Mariah, you're helping me, right? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that'll be a 19 um, total. And actually, one of the things about the Donair family, interestingly, one of them has a strange... He looks like a young man, but he has a streak of gray hair that courses um, across his uh, across his head, mm. um, just from one temple to the side. It's a very distinguishing mark. Is that familiar? Have we met someone with a distinguishing mark like that before? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, 19 investigation. Melvin, there's this portrait isn't hung very well. It's not set great against a stone. As you kind of look behind there, there's a little compartment behind there. And if you feel like if you took down the portrait, there would be um, a little cubby hole behind that space. Um, Melvin's up on his tippy toes trying to trying to move the, the portrait aside because he's not very tall. Um, and he looks around. Uh, uh, you guys see as he's Prion, moving, Sirian. it's about to unhook and just completely fall and ah, uh, a, a little bit Mel of Melvin's <laughs> about to yeet through you. a portrait. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll take it off. You catch it. Yeah. It is Sirian not just damaged. <laughs> I'll tell you later about the time that a portrait almost fell on me at a restaurant. No, it actually did fall on me. Not almost, it fell on me. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, oh I think I've read that story. I, I heard. I read a story Straight about a, a kid who got flattened by one and then walked around like a piece of paper, and he could like fit under <gasps> doors and stuff. Flat Stanley. Oh, you read it too. Of course, it's very popular. I look in the cubby hole, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow." I was like, "Shut up." <laughs> um, there is. Um, a a couple things. It's mostly just there's a, a wooden box unlocked as you open it up. Um, there are uh, it's a box of jewelry mostly, um, about ten different pieces worth about ten gold each. And then something catches your eye. It looks like an amulet created from made from a star crafted from five different raven's feathers. And these raven's, the um, 
feathers have flecks of gray in the feathers as well. Um, it's not magical. Melvin's magic, the tech magic doesn't pick any up anything magical, but there, there's something about the craftsmanship that is just you're kind of drawn to it. It feels comforting in your palm. I put that in my um, felt pouch and the jewelry into the um, uh, sack, the extra dimensional one. I can't remember words. Bag of hold holding? Bag of holding. My brain really wanted to go to here. It's Handy Haversack, which I know is not this system. But, yeah, okay. That was it in that, the... That is also a yeah, so system. Yeah, so system. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's this system? Oh, yeah, see, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. It's fine. I'm so drunk. <laughs> nice. You seem it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I am just trash. We can head over to the other room. Can't then. just do that. I mean, Mariah did drink yeah. a lot of alcohol during the last rest, so. Yeah, damn. Uh, open the door. Open the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize Prion was French. This is this is news to me. I, I gotta write that down. But the Prion. <laughs> Don't talk Prion. about the French. Your last name. <laughs> Namara. Namara. So in here, um, this appears to be servants' quarters, as will these. Um, this one, though, in particular. Um, Melvin, you're sensing a little bit of magic from that bag. It sits there open in the corner. Just drawstring, not drawn. It's kind of just hanging open. And there are multiple claw marks on the floor that seem to be uh, at an angle to suggest whatever was clawing was clawing from being drawn into the bag. Uh, you I mean, even you look... see a big chunk of a broken fingernail right oh. before the lip of the bag. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a very close look at without touching at the uh, the patterning on the bag. What kind of a design is it? Any, it's quite anything? plain. It's quite um, plain. Um, those trained in religion may make a religion check upon seeing this. Uh, what about half trained? <laughs> uh, you, yes, you may make a check. Okay. Anyone can make a check. I'll just put it that way. Anyone can roll religion. Aww. Okay. Aww. Go ahead. Oh, uh. oh, I actually am trained in religion. Ironically. 13. <laughs> nice job, Melvin. Uh, Did you say heretic? I'm trained in. Did you call me a heretic? <laughs> that was How wave. dare you, sir? Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking wave. So, Melvin with a 20 on your religion. Um, It's not. S- so much religious practice as a maybe urban legends kind of but there's an entity you've heard of called the bag man and as bags of holding are ubiquitous amongst adventure adventurers and those more capable you've heard that some of them are said to contain, or at least one, at least one of them is said to have contained a lost adventurer who once tried to climb in in order to hide himself and perished there. And the energy of the bag is not enough to sustain his soul. So occasionally, when adventurers are sleeping, a creature will crawl out of the bag of holding and drag something back in in order to feed I'm going to very gingerly pick up this bag without touching it. So I'm going to use part of my cloak to pick it up, just in case. Um, I'm going to take a quick close look at it. Um, I've seen a bag of devouring before. Um, there was one in Saltmarsh um, when I first joined the party. Uh, this does not look like one of those. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. 
You have so a distinct image in your mind as well as what the bag man looks like. Um, here's a uh, image. Oh, <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Hate that. <laughs> okay. I well, hate I'm that ex- for you. <laughs> I'm going to take a step back. Terrain's been looking for another boyfriend in Dominion, yeah, so... <laughs> going to hold it out away from the party. I like that long hair. <laughs> and I'm going to look back at the party and say... Well, here goes nothing, I guess. And I'm going to turn the bag inside out. Ha! Nothing inside. So where is he? What about if the witch was that creature? Or... What if that creature is around here somewhere? If there is a creature from here, the one you describe. That's that's more what I'm worried about. Huh. Great. I'm I'm so glad that you picked that up and emptied it. I'm Melvin, gonna... how about you re Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the bag back the way it was. <laughs> and then I'm gonna um take a small piece of, of like uh, a ration out of my pack and drop it into the bag. Okay. Rian, just have a grab hold of his arm, just in case. I'll grab him. Yep. Just, just to anchor you. Just in case. If, if nothing happens, I'm going to turn the bag over and turn it inside out again. The ration is gone. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Wow, I, I really do hate that. <laughs> okay, here's my idea. You're gonna, you're gonna re, yeah. We're gonna take some string. We're gonna tie that shit close, and then we're gonna wrap it in some more fabric and we're going to tie that shit closed and then it's going to go in a bag that is not my handy haversack a mundane bag and then we're going to tie some string around that (laughs) um i i want to do one more test i take out another piece of ration and drop it into the inside out bag and then flip it back right side out again Okay. And then reflip like, it. So I so while the bag is flipped inside out, I'm gonna put the, the ration in the outside of the bag that is on the inside of the okay. moment. And yeah, then I'm it gonna just, flip it back the right it, way. It just sits there and you flip it and just like you expect the okay. ration falls yeah, to yeah. the ground. Mm-hmm. Just making sure. Just making sure it's not a like a double sided bag of holding or something weird. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nothing like that. Yeah, no, I don't I don't like this. Um I'm gonna try to cinch it closed with the drawstring. Okay, cinch is closed. Why don't you put your hand in there and grab him out? No. Uh, 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 do, uh. do you want to? I, I'm not very strong. I don't no. think I could pull him out. Absolutely not. Why would you want to? <laughs> the same reason you would want to eat some cake from a witch. I want yeah, that's actually really cake. fair. God. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna... Do uh, you... <laughs> Uh, okay. Put the bag in a bag, and then you. Yeah, the I'm gonna first. I'm gonna take a sack so out of my backpack, and um, I'm gonna tie this bag inside that bag, um, nice and tight, and then I'm actually gonna sit down and I'm going to say, this might take me a couple minutes, but I think it'll be worth it, and I'm gonna start ritually casting magic mouth on. The, the bag that now contains a bag. Why don't you identify it first as well? Maybe we take a short rest while you do oh, that. Just rest it. Oh my gosh. Pray <laughs> on. <laughs> wow. We didn't actually take a short rest though. We only took 10 minutes. Yeah. We rested. <laughs> well, took some a of us Okay. I mean, some of us were working. I got bored. That's, <laughs> that's, that's 
She didn't like listening so to me chant and pray to myself in the corner. I don't really do religion, so well, <laughs> like if you okay, want, if you want to take that. twenty minutes, I can do that. But or like half an hour or something. Nah, uh, but no, we've got time for that later. I'm, we I'm, still know what the fuck is going on here, guys. Like I'm just I thought gonna, we figured that out. I'm just gonna do this, and we can we can deal with it later. I'm gonna cast magic mouth on this bag, um, with the trigger being something tries to open the bag from the inside. It's going okay. to say, "Warning! Warning!" The bag is opening. Okay. Amazing. Um, would... And then I'm going to put that into my backpack, not would... my bag of holding. Why would you do it in okay. that voice, Melvin? Ah. That's just my voice. Oh, you it's, did it. it sounds a little bit more tinny through the magic mouth. I don't know what it is. Uh... Something about the playback is weird. Mm. That makes sense. Really well. accentuates the heights. Yeah, it gets a little more yeah. nasally. Um, DM, is that a door north of me? No. That's just a wall. Okay. So it kind of seems like the only thing left up here is the glowing and green door. I will say too, in here, it looks one of these servants around their bed, they looked particularly religious. There's a little shrine and a bunch of um, what looked to be little prayer books or whatever. One Ooh. mentions, in fact, Ezra. Oh. Another Ooh. one, there is actually a large symbol above the bed that shows a shield crossed by a sprig of belladonna as well. Wait, what? Wasn't that the stuff that's downstairs? Yes. E. <laughs> e. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, which which e. servant's bed was this, Peter? That one? Right here. Um, Interesting. Uh, looking around investigating shows simple things. Um, the journal completely mundane about various tasks, but you learn that the person who lived here was called Agatha. Yeah. You also see that there is an exceptionally long bed in the room up here. And a lot of different tools, um, a nice set of clothes. You surmise that the one to the north was at least belonged at least to the um, the very tall butler whose presence you have seen oh, lurking about yeah. at times. Okay. No, so maybe guy. Apron Lady is Agatha. Right? And she worships Ezra, whoever the fuck that is. Who's that lady? Apron Lady. <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, Hebe. 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 And while there's not text, there's also information in here that would suggest a relationship between worshippers of Ezra. And there's a brief mention to something that sounds strange to you, but makes sense based on what you just found. Something called the Order of the Feather. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Order of the feather. Hmm. Okay. Green room. Monks, worshippers of Ezra, you would assume. So, yeah. Interesting. Green room's the only place on this floor you have not explored. The green room. Do the green room. Everyone take mm -hmm. 10. <laughs> Thank you, 10. Thank you, 10. Thank you, 10. You approach you. and the, there is this subtle green glow emanating from the door. Is there like a little bit of, like a broken bit of wood or something like a length um, that I can pick up that I can sort of poke at the door with? Yeah, from there's a, a lot of broken stuff in here after yeah. you guys. Okay, I'll, I'll grab like a, ch a broken toys. chair leg or something and I'll just sort of like very gently poke the door with the chair leg from like five feet away. Okay. So is it murder dun, if they dun, attacked dun. us first? Yes. No, oh, that qualifies as self defense. <gasps> no, it is not. <laughs> yeah, you try that on a court of law, Peter. Okay. Stand your ground. Uh, yikes. Um, you start dunk, 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 knocking on the uh, uh, wooden country. door, and nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing happens. Ooh. 
I was muted, but uh, I would like to mage hand to try to open the door, see if it's locked. Okay. It seems very much locked. The door, the knob does not even turn. Well, powerful abjuration magic on this door, you say, Melvin, right? Yeah, that's what I detected earlier. Do you think it's magically locked or mundanely locked? I don't know. Okay. If it could mag be magically locked or it could be trapped with magic. I, I have no idea. Well, if it's magically locked, I could try to remove said magic. Would you like me to take a closer look at it and try to find out? Sure. I would love not to waste the spell. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's what I figured. I'm going to take a close look at this door without touching it. Preferably. Okay, with make an investigation check. Mm -hmm. I'll help. Oh, okay. You know it's magical already. Or Arcana. Um. So is I'm trying to determine the magic nature of still the spell. going. It is not because I cast magic mouth as a ritual. Okay, you can make Arcana check. Okay. I can also help with that as I am proficient. Sweet. Um. Ooh, that's a natural nineteen plus ten is twenty nine. Sweet. Ooh. Fuck. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. You. Um sort of sense the fabric of the weave around this door um, and the fact that judging by the fact both that you could not even jiggle the lock and that this there seems to be um, an absence of airflow around it the room the, the air the it doesn't breathe the way that a normal house would this seems so solidified you would think that this is most certainly magically locked um Beyond that, you can't see any trap that you're aware of, but there is energy here beyond a simple arcane lock. Yeah, I, I think there's something else here. I don't think it's just magically locked, but I can't tell what it is or what might set it off. Okay. Got a couple options here. I could try to dispel the door. Or we go back downstairs and deal with whatever the fuck was bricked up and see if we can find anything that might help us with this. Hmm. Possibly. Because it would be a right shame if we went through all the trouble of dispelling this door, dealing with whatever's inside, then heading downstairs and finding something that just opened this door for us. That's a good point. Fair enough. How are we going to get out in downstairs? Of <laughs> it's been bricked up. How do we get in? No, we heard it go down. Ah. I wonder if this is something we should wait for to do next week when we have other folks with us. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Just, out, just, just interesting. Mm. Mm. <laughs> IDK, 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 IDK. Oh, where's golly. where's I'm Nether here. and <laughs> there right, right around the corner? Interested in watching what you all were doing. Um, oh, good. She's watching to make sure I don't fireball Mariah again. You got a shadow. <laughs> yeah. She's know, been stalking just... you. <laughs> Curious. Um, the... So no one touches the door. Ooh, I really want to. <sighs> like I'm standing well away from it. <laughs> I'll do it if you don't. Fuck it, I touched the door. The rain okay. would do it too. <laughs> and we move back. <clears throat> Mariah, you touch the door, you feel a surge of power. Stands your hair on edge for a bit, and then you feel a soothing, comfortable warmth. And the grains of the wood begin to warp in front of you. And instead of just... Um, uh, like a door made from vertically vertical grained planks the grain shifts around and suddenly depicts the image of a shield blank mm -hmm. but the image of a shield nonetheless belladonna we need the fucking belladonna like right now like you need me to go get the belladonna 
Yeah, like their shield. It, it's this. It's this. I okay. I'm making an assumption here. Is it the same shape of shield that was in the thing with Ezra's stuff? It is. Yeah. Okay. So we need. I okay. He, my assumption is that we need to put some belladonna across the shield. Uh, Nether took some of the berries from the belladonna down in the conservatory. We give that a shot first. I I take a berry from Nether. I hope she acquiesces in her absence. Um, I don't think and I kind of just like they took it. touch the berry to the shield. Well, I was in the room oh, okay. when. Oh yes, yes, you were. Doll yeah. took them. Yeah. Okay, touch. so you take out some belladonna berries. Yeah. yeah. Just the berries. berries. We only we have, have berries. Right take out a berry, touch. and you feel a, ooh, a bit of hum of the energy, but nothing happens. Okay, we need a full sprig. Uh, I'll go get it. All right. You, you've solved it. You can run down, grab a sprig. The plant does uh, not object. And as soon good. as Talise comes within 10 feet of the door, suddenly you feel the energy of the lock dissipate. And right. Here, the handle is belladonna. pliable once again. Open the door. Which reveals... A children's bedroom. Oh no. Oh no. Two toys sit upon each bed. Or a, a toy sits upon each bed. And then a skeleton in a chair between them. Clutching in its arms what looks to be a prayer book and half of a journal. Saray so rushes this towards space, the journal. Same Z's though. Um, um, entering this space, uh, you feel calm and sort of protected. And then Nether starts to walk in and she stops and looks towards where you know Dahl might be. I don't think I can come in here. She says she stays out in the playground. Okay. Dahl can't at I'm least interesting I think I understand yeah. and as we're sort of wrapping up for the night you do find the second half of the journal which whoever would like to can I show what this I is I was thinking because Serain found the first half you, that it would do you want to make the second half just just because I had the first half but I truly sure, don't know sure, sure. no, go, go ahead, ahead Serain this is this is your find Okay. Kind of, yeah. Ooh. I I found I found the other half of the journal. Theodora Theodora's journal from earlier. Um Okay. Uh, it says today was the last straw. She looked at me, pointed her finger rudely to my face, and condemned me. And my Dominic, he flew into an absolute tantrum, throwing his toys around the room. I finally calmed him down, put him to bed. Then as I was cleaning his toys, suddenly I was pushed into the clothes, the closet and the door slammed shut behind. When I opened the door, he pretended to be asleep again. This is unacceptable, even at his age. And then there's two more. My brother is coming to take the children into the city and not a moment too soon. Last night, Sedra had terrible dreams. I shook her, but wasn't able to wake her. I went to make her a tea from the garden leaves, something to help break a fever. And when I returned, she sat on the edge of her bed, her toys in a line before her. Faithless, betrayers, liars, I condemn you all, rot in these walls. I remember those words echoing from her, though they sounded as if they belonged to another. Tomorrow, tomorrow they will be away from here. The window must have broken, or a, a draft. The toys flew from her, impacted on the wall. Then she fell back asleep. One hit the wall so hard it crumbled into dust. Mine, mine, mine. She mumbled until morning. Here's the last entry. They've gone back to the city, back in two months, maybe less, for their birthdays. Time at least to prepare. 
Yet I cannot shake the feeling that something else is here at night and in those quiet moments of stillness, something moves. I should make sure there's no strange mold in the basement. I could use a bottle of wine anyway. Well, Mariah, that sounds like it might be of interest to, to you. Gee, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Just know you like wine. <laughs> That's true. I've taken wine from creepier places. And <laughs> as you were reading this, the two toys on the beds turn their heads towards the group, eyes alight with a gentle amber. Did you take care of the hungry one? She is dusted. You can stay in here with us. We can play games. Do you want to know what my favorite game is? They ask. And as they ask this question of all of you, I think this is where we will um, break for the evening and we will do the final part of this adventure tomorrow, or not tomorrow, <laughs> next week, <laughs> when we meet next with the rest of our crew. Wow.